gel with each other quickly. Indeed, it's a cold one here at Meadow Lane tonight. It um, survived a, a pitch inspection at three o'clock, and then the, the referee was out multiple times between sort of five and half past six. There was lights out on the pitch to try and warm certain areas. But we're all good. It's just very cold, and we'll try and not mention that too many times throughout the course of the evening. But wherever you are, if you're indoors and you've got a cup of tea, then just, uh, then just think of us for a second. The, uh, the two sets of players are going to swap sides before we kick off and not to attack the cop in the first half. Which is not something that they like to do particularly at the moment. But Knox will kick us off. No point even trying to compete, is there? Really isn't. I was going to say, that's a sound system many people have wanted at Christmas, wouldn't it? Like, you want a new stereo? Come and have a listen to Meadow Lane. It all goes dark in the press box and we are about ready to go. It's exactly quarter to eight on your Friday evening and not get us started. In the second round of the FA Cup, they will kick right to left in this first half in black and white, of course, as always, Shrewsbury in their home kit as well. Blue with that sort of yellowy orange trim on the collar. Blue shorts, blue socks for them and not have possession of the ball inside their own half with Richard Brindley, who starts on the right of the back through. When I first gave the team to quarter seven, I got all three of the central defenders in the wrong positions. This is Brindley, Baldwin, Rawlinson at right to the left. And Knotts pass it forward, looking for Aaron the man. It's just touched away from him and then back to Shrewsbury's number four, who is Joe Anderson, who clears down that far touchline. Now Benning will try and keep the ball in play, which he can do. Halfway inside the Knotts half, early cross hits Aidan Baldwin. He'll try and keep it in play, but his clearance downfield. He gets away with somewhat and keeps Knotts in possession. Over on that far touchline, Randall runs into a little bit of trouble and then manages to just ship the ball back to Baldwin. He will have to scamper to keep it in play by the goal line. Then slips in a very bad position and now Shrewsbury could be in. It's squared across goal and tapped in and less than a minute in. Shrewsbury have the lead. It's Ryan Bowman with the goal. 58 seconds into the game and Shrewsbury have the lead from their first attack. The first attack of the game, not just their first attack. Aidan Baldwin slipped in a very unfortunate position inside the penalty area by the goal line. Right-hand side, squared across goal for a tap-in for Bowman. We've played a minute. It's not nil. Shrewsbury won. Yeah, it's a horror start from Notts and we were speaking before the game about doing your research as a play, you come out, you test your studs, you make sure you've got the right footwear because you know it's going to be a slippy surface tonight and Horror of horror starts. Aidan Baldwin down by the byline, just a couple of yards up from the byline on the right hand side of the penalty area. He looks to just sell a dummy to the striker who's closing him down, and as he drags it inside in towards his own goal, he slips, loses his foot in. The Shrewsbury start striker says, Thanks very much. I think it's Dan Udo who squares it to his strike partner, Ryan Bowman, who's got a tap in from four yards. Nobody in the Knots goal, nothing that anybody could do about it. And it's a horror start. It's Knots nil, Shrewsbury won. Yeah, the back pass from, from Randall to Baldwin wasn't wasn't quite the nicest one for Baldwin to deal with. He had to turn and face to sort of the goal line, but then he slips over, very unfortunate. And Shrewsbury has the lead, knots behind already. There's now two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock, and it's the Shrewsbury fans making all the noise over in the Jimmy Cyril stand away on the far side from us. Knots have, I think they've won themselves a throw. Referee and the been taking a long, long time to decide, and they do decide that it'll be a knots throw in. How much can Aidan Baldwin blame the what he's not frozen, not clearly because the game's on, but a cold pitch? Is that is, is that why he slipped over? Well, I mean, look, it's unfortunate, of course it is, but say so you, you have your warm-up, you have a chance to, to to check different areas of the pitch. Okay, he might not have been down that end, you know, that's the where the away team usually warm up, or the half the away team warm up in, but uh, it's unfortunate one of them things it's a nightmare start it's exactly what the visitors wanted if you've only scored two goals away from home you want to be presented with one like that and they make no mistake from it here come not so wide left with Sam Austin tries a cross goes through the defender's legs and it's hooked out of play on this near side for a knots throw in Chickson across to take it in line with the penalty area throws back to Bostock gets the ball back Chickson in line with the penalty area, left-hand side. Sells the defender a dummy, still can't quite beat him on this near side. He can't get past Bennett yet, and now it's turned back to Bostock and from him back to Rawlinson, and now they're inside their own half with Baldwin. Stays on his feet this time with a square pass to Brindley. It's not nil Shrewsbury 1, a match night from BBC Radio Nottingham. Just three and a half minutes in here at Meadow Lane. Baldwin on the ball again. Now Rawlinson just short of the halfway line. Goes back to Baldwin inside the centre circle once more and then onto that far touchline towards Brindley now inside the Shrewsbury half 
Brindley still going, then plays it down that far touchline to Randall. Got the man just behind him. Randall tries to take on his man, then puts back on towards his left foot, pulls it back towards Gosling. As uh, an applause rings around Meadow Lane in the fourth minute. In memory of the four teenagers who very sadly drowned after their car overturned on a camping trip in North Wales last month. 16-year-old Jevon Hurst, 17-year-old Wilf Fitchett and Harvey Owen and Hugo Morris, who was 18, were all from the Shrewsbury area. And every side of Meadow Lane stops to applaud, as does both sets of managers and everybody else inside the fourth minute here in memory of those four teenagers. It's a very touching moment. Well, I said we're from the Shrewsbury area and very sadly died in North Wales last month. On the pitch, Knotts have kept the ball for all of that time. On towards Sam Austin on this near side. Lays it to Bostock. He runs forward with the ball and then wins a throw in. I mean, it's definitely not thrown. I'm not quite sure what Ryan Bowman can be complaining about since right in front of the referee, Martin Woods, who last refereed knots in the 4-1 defeat at home to Woking. One of very few home blips of the last three or four years, really. Not still got the possession of the ball. Halfway inside the Shrewsbury half, and they go back in towards their own half to Dan Gosling. Yeah, so an extended period of possession for knots, but Shrewsbury... In 3-5-2 but it, when they're out of possession of the ball they drop back into a back 5 5-3-2 five, happy to let Notts have it around the halfway line and you say well that minute's applause happened for them four lads that so sadly lost their lives Notts kept the ball but weren't able to get within about 30 yards of the uh, of the Shrewsbury goal so well organised were the visitors so the loose pass this time from Connor Rawlins and Dan Gosling there to help pick up the pieces and somewhat bail Notts out there from what could have been an unfortunate position with Shrewsbury trying to break on the uh, sort of Knott's mistake, which they've already done, of course. They have a goal up after Aidan Baldwin's slip. Right edge of the penalty area allowed Shrewsbury in. Ryan Bowman's goal, the difference six minutes in here at Meadow Lane. It's Knott's nil, Shrewsbury won in the second round of the FA Cup. Third round draw is on Sunday afternoon, about one o'clock, because Marias is surely fouled, he is, by um, Dunkley. And he got on with a free kick to Knott's. Marias looked limping away slightly. Looks like he's OK. And Adam Chickson's on the ball wide left as the Knotts fans start to make some noise around us. It's now Gosling. Outside of him is Bostock. He's got about trying to take his man on. Thinks again and comes back inside to Rawlinson. Every outfield man inside the Shrewsbury half. Now it's on towards the man. It's just nicked away from him. And now again, Shrewsbury will try and break very quickly on that sort of Knotts mistake. They're not allowed to go quite as quickly as they would have wanted to. As Anderson with a searching long ball down that far touch line to a well timed run. Baldwin knees the ball back towards Stone and then has to recover himself to pass it back to him. And then it's passed on towards Rawlinson. He's got two chasing him down. He fizzes the pass into Chickson with a lovely touch to keep the ball in play and keep Knotts in possession. And that's, I think, how they tried to play the ball around the first time. <laughs> what led to the Shrewsbury goal? Absolutely. But yeah, good composed play from Knotts at the back that time. Aidan Baldwin, despite that slip that led to the early goal in the first minute for the visitors. Composed there, the ball over the top down that left forward left hand channel for Shrewsbury, but maintain his feet, maintain his composure, going back to the keeper and out the other side for Notts, who, who will try and play out. You know, that's the way Luke Williams has them playing. It's just when on nights like this, when the pitch has got that little bit of slippiness on it, it is a bit firm underfoot. You've got to be so assured with your passing, you've got to make sure you connect the dots, find your teammate, as we saw with you know, that led to the goal. The pass that led to the goal was just slightly wayward that sent Aidan Baldwin back towards his own goal. Aaron, the man does very well to turn away from his man and then continue his run forward. The referee, I thought, might pull it back for a free kick. He showed the advantage, but he doesn't do so. And now Shrewsbury have it and try and come the other way. Gosling gets a foot in. And fairly, according to the referee, not to the uh, pleasure of Dan Udo, who throws his hands to the ground in frustration. It will hurt on a night like this. Now Chickson has it wide left in line with the penalty area. Back towards Gosling, who's picked up some good positions in the opening eight and a half minutes. Outside of him is Chickson once more. On his weaker right foot goes back to Gosling. And then he goes back to Rawlinson and again on towards Baldwin. 
He finds a pass in between a couple of Shrewsbury men to Austin. You can turn it around the corner for Brindley and tries that not to way down the right-hand side. This is good football. Brindley with the cross, which is headed away on the edge of the penalty area. And now again, Shrewsbury trying to get numbers forward quickly to break. It's lumped forward towards Udo on that far side. Randall trying to get back. Rawlins and slides in the very high challenge, which the referee deems as legal by winning the ball. And then the man is fouled once the ball's gone. This game just starts to heat up slightly. We're a long, long way away from it, but Conor Rawlinson did win the ball, but flew into that challenge. Well, uh, it's a sort of throwback challenge, that is. He took a bit of everything, Conor Rawlinson. Dan Udo slowly picking himself up. I think he's all right, but it was a, a robust tackle, shall we say? The sort of tackle that you see nowadays constantly given as a free kick. Oh, Gosling's done well to win the ball back high up the pitch here, and then wings across in towards the back post, which Anderson doesn't get very much on, and Benning just shins behind, completely volleys the ball behind for the game's first corner and maybe that's just a sign that shows we aren't all that confident defensively because as soon as the ball went into the penalty area they shins it out of play yeah, take absolutely. the corner quickly sorry Stout yes absolutely it's a little bit of panic in the Shrewsbury defence despite the visitors being one to the good not corner from their attacking right taken short now Randall trying to run past Benning whips across in along the six yard box cleared away by Anderson Udo helps it on but only out of play for a notch throw in and that gets a cop making some noise once again Not throw in far side ten minutes gone Notts nil Shrewsbury one Randall to take this throw in for Notts. He's 10 yards up from the edge of the penalty area, right-hand side. Not got too many options. Now Austin becomes available and touches the ball back to Baldwin inside his own half. Very deep Shrewsbury. They're allowing Notts to have a lot of possession, but equally, as soon as they win it back, they, they do try and pounce. As Baldwin and Brindley completely leave the ball for each other, but thankfully on that occasion, they don't pounce, as I've just said, and Notts can rectify their mistake on that occasion. Yeah, so certainly say Shrewsbury on to high pressing team are they? they're happy to sit back almost a half court press deep block as they call it just get their shape the 5-3-2 out of possession not so had plenty of the ball it's just about can they find the gaps find the spaces pick the passes as Aidan Baldwin just lost one too far just over the head of Adam Chickson and out for a throw in but yeah certainly Shrewsbury with that early goal in the first minute they, they've thrown a bit of a gauntlet down to Notts to say well look okay we'll sit off you you can have the ball on the halfway line have you got the quality to pick them passes and exploit any spaces or open us up and create space to create yourself some chances Shrewsbury throw in right hand side thrown down the line by Bennett towards Bowman the goal scorer it's one in the midfield by Kenner on loan from Hibbs but um, not have it back with Baldwin across towards Randall inside his own half facing his own goal has to go back to Stone first time passes a good one to find Rawlinson Luke Williams applauds Rawlinson just jogs up towards halfway then just stops for a second and lays it five yards back to Baldwin and then gives it back to Rawlinson and he crosses halfway with it and then runs in between a couple and lays it on to Chickson back from him to Bostock who's Popped up a lot in the uh, sort of wide left position so far. Now Gosling is fouled off the ball. Referee plays the advantage as Brindley still has it for not. Now Austin lets the ball roll under his studs. We can change direction on towards Randall. You can keep possession by going back to Brindley. And now Baldwin has it inside the centre circle. Across to Rawlinson. Plays one-two with Bostock. And not it appears, can pretty much have as much of the ball as they want, really. Shrewsbury... Not all that, all that intent on trying to win it back, particularly hard at the pitch at all. No, absolutely. Just, yeah, let's say, just trying to keep their shape behind the ball. Not so bad, I would say, 85% possession in this game, but nothing really near the uh, Shrewsbury penalty area. Chickson tries a cross towards the back post, which Randall, it hits his shoulder. He's unlucky. He's trying to lean into his defender, let the ball go across his body, try and keep possession. But as he tries to turn to his right-hand side, the ball hit his left shoulder and goes behind for a goal kick it's starting to roll in with a bit of mist and fog you can just sort of see through the floodlights it's so cold you can you can see your breath when you're talking <laughs> it's, it's very chilly isn't it yeah, you can see it but uh, I mean I remember playing here back in the day against Wimbledon FA Cup tie that got abandoned just after half time when we were 1-0 up at half time years and years ago so we'll keep an eye on that it doesn't look like it's going to be too bad at this minute but we shall wait and see. We've had 13 minutes of the game so far, and it's Shrewsbury who are one goal to the good. Dan Udo is guilty of committing a foul, and so not to have a free kick halfway inside their own half, which is taken to the feet of Connell Rawlinson. He reverses the direction to Brindley, and now the man down that far touchline. Outside of him is Randall. 
gives it in back, five yards or so up from the halfway line. Now it goes back into their own half to Baldwin. Now Brindley has it. Neat pass and neat triangle between Gosling and Baldwin. And now find the pass in towards Austin. Lays it left to Rawlinson. And then back in field to Gosling inside the centre circle. Who switches it on towards Richard Brindley. Who can bring it forward from that position, at least for the time being. Halfway inside the Shrewsbury half now. Lays it off towards Randall, who runs in field. And still, and then passes it to Rawlinson. Then gives it back to Brindley on that far touchline once again. It's very patient from Knox. Now Gosling in between the lines momentarily. Can find a pass on towards Randall. Keeps it in play for a second. Then it's fouled very heavily by Mal Benning. Once the ball had gone. As we are not sure he kicking line the penalty area right-hand side. Yeah, again, Knox moving the ball quite well. Just patient in the build-up. Work it out to that wide right-hand touchline. Level with the... Shrewsbury penalty area and Will Randall just a slightly sloppy first touch gets it stuck under his feet which invites the tackle from Benning thankfully Randall is able to recover his feet quickly enough move the ball draw the foul and win that's a free kick barely a yard in from that right hand touch line and so, as I say level with the 18 yard box Randall and Bostock the two that are over it it's couldn't be any further on the right hand side I think probably the, some of the ball is actually touching that that touch line on the far side towards the referee just having a word with a couple of players inside the penalty area, then blows his whistle. Bostock runs over the ball. Randall pulls it low square towards Austin, who tried a shot and ended up just missing the ball. It wasn't quite the best pullback, and now there could be a break on for Shrewsbury. who have got bodies up as they cross halfway. It's Jordan Shipley who's continuing to run. He's still got the ball, edge of the penalty area now. He's now got a few covering defenders, and Dan Gosling is one of them. He shows his experience there. Plays the ball up towards Gini Marais, and he might try and have a little run of his man here. He's surely fouled. He is. And Shea Dunkley, in my opinion, is lucky to escape yellow card. In fact, he's not going to, that's why. Shea Dunkley is booked to junior right ever so well. He's up there on his own after Dan Gosling had done well to sort of hold that counter-attack. And Shea Dunkley will be the first man inside the referee's notebook. Yeah, just a, a multitude of errors, really, and that was passage of play, wasn't it? Initially, Knotts went for one of them free kicks out wide where they look like they're going to put it into the box and then pull it to the edge of the box for somebody to have a shot. Well, it was read by the Shrewsbury midfield player, uh, Shipley, who, who read the ball and then carried it 50, 60 yards towards the Knotts penalty area. Then his pass gives it straight to Dan Gosling, who then allows Junior Marias to get on the ball and try to counter-attack their counter-attack, and he gets brought down on the first booking of the night for uh, the Shrewsbury skipper, Shea Dunkley. Indeed. 16 gone, match night from BBC Radio Nottingham. Don't forget, if, you, if it's easier for you or you know someone outside the area, you can get this online as well this evening in the UK. Another sloppy ball from Aidan Baldwin. John Bostock can't win it back, and again, Shrewsbury will try and pounce on that Knotts mistake. It's now with Benning on that far touchline. Randall getting back. Does enough to halt his progress initially. Well, it's pulled back to Anderson, who tries an early cross left-hand side, which is left at the near post. Rawlinson gets there ahead of Bowman. Marais will challenge but won't win. The second ball will bounce favourably for Knotts and Gosling can find chicks and Knotts should be able to clear and get back to Aidan Stone who is unpressured and can pick a pass but again all of Shrewsbury's advancing is from is from Knotts' wrongdoings yeah absolutely when Knotts concede possession of the ball sloppily that time Aidan Baldwin just looking to play a little first time ball 10 yard ball into midfield doesn't find his man and then it allows Shrewsbury to try and spring so they're obviously you know, they're doing that. Now, whether they'd have done that from the start anyway, or whether they're doing that now, sitting off, you know, condensing space and looking to spring on the counter-attack since they've got that early goal, you know, we will, we will never know. But, you know, they're, they're keeping knots at arm's length pretty uh, convincingly so far. Not for all the possession that they've had, not really had anything in the way of terms of an opening. Good interception from Aidan Baldwin was vital as well, because it might have set Bowman through. We've been a long way out of goal, but he would have been through, I think towards goal at least and now Knotts will try and come in the opposite direction it's with Austin good couple of touches to keep the ball in his stride then cuts on towards his right foot pulls it back towards Rawlinson his body's up there and so he goes to Austin again got Chicks outside of him got three men not too far around him Austin in the end can't beat all three of them but does manage to just nudge his man fairly enough to win Knotts possession back it's with Gosling never played in the FA Cup before round three so far in his career, Dan Gosling. He gets the ball back now. In towards the man and gets the ball back again, does Gosling. Finds the man once more. Benning close to him, but the man does well to snub him out a couple of times. Has to go backwards with it though. Now Baldwin, who is inside his own half, has possession for Knotts. 18 and a half gone, Knotts nil, Shrewsbury one. 
Yeah, so you, when you look at the Notts team that's been selected tonight, you know, eight changes from, from Tuesday night, no Dan Crowley, no Macaulay Langstaff, although he is on the bench, and no David McGoldrick, that oh-so-potent front three that Notts have had this season, none of them in this starting lineup. So you just wonder, you know, how are we still going to have that same potency? Have we still got that same cutting edge and threat? Indeed, Ginny Wright leading the line tonight for Notts. Sattery's goal against Crawley on Tuesday. Rawlinson on the ball for Notts. The two wing-backs, Chicks and Randall, are the highest forward for Notts at the minute, in line with the Shrewsbury back line at the moment. Baldwin goes square towards Gosling. He was finding a lot of space in, in lots of different areas across that sort of midfield band, if you like. Had a good opening 20 minutes, I'd say, Dan Gosling so far. I think, I think the game's started perfectly for him, hasn't it? I want to say Shrewsbury not really pressing, allowing Notts to have him. So it, he's usually been Notts' deepest line of the midfield three. Uh, he's been able to get on the ball, be the little pivot, receive balls off the centre halves, and just link play, try and link it from left to right. Rawlinson, square towards Bostock. All of this inside the Shrewsbury half, but then momentarily dip into their own half with Baldwin finding a pass to Naman. Who's got options outside from him with Brindley. Randall down the line. So Brindley goes back to Baldwin. Now Gosling. Mariah has his back to goal and turns it out wide right to Brindley again. He goes back into his own half to Baldwin. These possession stats at this point of the game must be must be in, in at least the 80s, I'd imagine. Well, I was going to say, 20 minutes just ticked over on the scoreboard. Not absolutely must have had 80% possession of the ball, but the game just goes to show you it's what you do with the ball, isn't it? And as of yet, Notts haven't troubled uh, Marco Morosi in the Shrewsbury goal. I'm not, I'm not even sure he's had a touch other than taking a goal kick. It's a good point, actually. I haven't thought about that. I don't think he has to. Oh, Adrian Stone gets away with the ball forward there. And then it, it ends up being a fantastic pass to Adam Chickson because it bypasses a couple more. And now Chickson can sprint down the left-hand side. He's got options inside the box, pulls it back towards Austin on his right foot, dinks the ball towards the back post, headed up in the air by Pierre. Only as far as Gosling edge of the penalty area. Outside of him is Randall, who's running inside at Benning. And still, pulls it back towards the man, dinks it in field, shouts around balls, now with Gosling, where's the ball going to fit? Oh, he's going to bounce down to the goalkeeper. It could have bounced anywhere inside a six-yard box, ricocheting off of a couple. And Marco Morosi can end up just picking the ball up on the edge of his six-yard box. Well, there we go, he does have a touch, he's collecting a ball after a little bit of panic, a little bit of mayhem inside the Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury box. First time we've put a ball in, Adam Chickson making 20, 30 yards down the left-hand side, just pulling it back to Sam Austin, his right-footed curling cross to the back post. Initially dealt with by Shrewsbury, but then the second phase of play comes in and nobody really commands the penalty area. It ricochets between a couple of plays, nearly falls for Dan Gosling, about eight to nine yards out. And unfortunately, he just can't bring it under his spell and it just rolls through to Morosi. And he will pick it up and clear the danger, but already not to have won the ball back, albeit in their own half. 81% possession. Thank you, Chris Gadsy, back in the studio. So far for not It wasn't a bad guess, was it? <laughs> <laughs> not bad at all, eh? <laughs> Pretty good. It's, it's cold, but our brains are still working. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> still working enough, shall we say. 22 on the clock, Notts nil, Shrewsbury 1. Of course, Notts fell behind early on in the first round of the Cup against Crawley. Three minutes on that occasion, one minute tonight. Ended up winning it, so it's far from over. Still three quarters of the game to go. If we're level after 90 minutes, we go through a replay in Shropshire a week on Tuesday, don't forget. Ball over the top, looking for Chicks and has too much on it and Morosi can come out of his goal to claim. But since you've said it, he's starting to have a few more touches and not so starting to maybe just sort of creep nearer and nearer towards his goal. Yeah, absolutely. I say that we know Notts are patient and we know as Notts fans you, you've got to be patient with that slow, patient build-up, keeping possession, trying to work the, work the ball, trying to move your opponents and create some space. Shrewsbury has been very disciplined in the first half of this first half, not really being drawn out of that 5-3-2 that shape out of possession. You know, not pressing high but keeping bodies in the middle of the park and not allowing Notts really any gaps or any spaces for, for their attacking players to get into and, and have time on the ball. Race on the ball again, is he going to Go long first time downfield is the Slovakian in the Shrewsbury goal. It bounces favour on that far side towards Udo, who gets there ahead of Richard Brindley. He's forced wide with it, not to have numbers back, but Shrewsbury still have it now with Benning. Back down the line for Udo once more, running in field with it, plays it 
in towards the penalty area, but Gosling is there to snuff it away and then is fouled by Dan Udo right in front of the Shrewsbury fans who are not happy with it. I think he did win the ball, but it was sort of had to go through Gosling to get there, which I think is why the referee's given that one as a foul. Yeah, good experience play from Dan Gosling there, just putting his body between the ball and man. And Udo, a little bit of frustration after, you know, he tried to play a 1-2 on the edge of the Knox penalty area, didn't get the ball back and, you know, threw himself into the tackle. Dan Gosling could see it coming, puts his body in the way and wins Knox the free kick. He's taken towards Rawlinson, who can scamper towards halfway, then try and play on through the middle for the run of Austin. It's headed away and out of play by Pierre for a not throwing. Jixon gets on with it quickly in towards Austin. Back up the line to Bostock. Bostock runs in field with it and gives it to Baldwin. Lays it on first time to the right of him is Brindley. Every single knots player inside the Shrewsbury half. Back passes over the boot of Baldwin. Has to turn and face his own goal to keep Knotts in possession by, by, by going back to Aidan Stone. Back between the sticks again from the start this evening. Sam Sloper not on the bench after he was injured in the first half against Crawley on Tuesday night. And it's interesting that Knotts have not got a goalkeeper on the bench despite being able to name <laughs> nine <laughs> substitutes. Yeah, interesting on that. Not sure what the plan would be if this was a league game rather than a cup game. That's another poor ball forward from, from Knotts. Rawlinson trying to find Austin. It wasn't really anywhere near him in truth. And now Shrewsbury will try and bring the ball forward. Bowman is held off well by Rawlinson who recovers. But Shrewsbury have it back once again. Mirai is trying to put the pressure on Dunkley. Doing a good job of it as well to really just put him off. He has to just launch the ball forward but aimlessly and Baldwin can turn it back towards Aidan Stone. And Knotts again back in comfortable possession and Dan Udo there is very unhappy with his teammate and it's just a sign of growing how, how hard is it even if you have the lead style when you're not seeing any of the ball how hard is it to not get a bit frustrated well exactly and that's what you're seeing there from Udo he's remonstrating with uh, I think it's Elliot Bennett who's playing as the right wing back for Shrewsbury because he's just launched an aimless ball down, down, the, down the flanks and just conceded possession again you know although they're winning and, and be comfortable you know not not haven't really threatened Morosi in the in the uh, Shrewsbury goal but not so having all the ball and yet you know as strikers what you don't want to be doing is chasing the ball for, for large parts of the game and that's exactly what Udo and Bowman have had to do they've seen precious little of the ball at their feet other than the slip from Aidan Baldwin that they've given them the lead and all they're doing is, is sort of shadow pressing and believe me that is a striker's worst nightmare <laughs> <laughs> Particularly yours, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I'd have been remonstrating with a few other teammates as well, <laughs> not just the one. It's still not Neil Shrewsbury one. 26 minutes on the clock. I've said this a few times commentating for Knotts this season, and that take the goal out of the way, and again, Aiden Stone's ball forward is a bit poor, and Udo can head it on, and Rawlinson is there to cover, and stupid headed back towards Aiden Stone. Not the first time that. Stone's kind of got away with one. That one he, he, he only just gets away with, with his ball trying to find Rawlinson wide left, sort of left back area, which didn't have enough on it to beat the head of Dan Udo. And thankfully, it had, it had just enough high that Udo couldn't really control a header and keep Shrewsbury in possession. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Udo could have been saying to his, his teammate Benny a minute ago, I wish you'd give us better, a service as good as the Knotts players are giving him, <laughs> because Aidan Stone there just chipped it up onto his head. You know, it's as, as good a pass as he's had all game. Here come Knotts. It's with the man back to goal, halfway inside the Shrewsbury half. Now back into his own half to Baldwin, who lays it to Bostock. Now Brindley has it down that far touch line to Randall. Heavy first touch, forces him backwards to Brindley once again. Infield to Baldwin, just in a couple of yards inside his own half. Square to Rawlinson. Heavy first touch from him in the wrong direction as well, forcing him back to the goalkeeper. Stone, who has to just up and under it downfield first time. Marais will challenge, but the offside flag is up against him. And so Shrewsbury will have a free kick. What I was going to say before Stone misplaced past a few moments ago is I've said this a few times commentating Knotts this season. Take the goal away. Knotts be very, very happy with how they've played. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, say they've dominated possession. OK, not created anything, but neither of Shrewsbury. Yeah. Shrewsbury haven't created a, a thing themselves. So it's like that one slip from Aidan Baldwin just presented the goal on a platter uh, for Ryan Bowman. Um, aside from that, there's been nothing in the game. It's been a possession, it's like a possession training session. Uh, to be honest, so far, not keeping the ball. Shrewsbury happy to let them have the ball, but any time they try and get in the, in the final third, looking to close the door and close the space. Free kick, trying to find Mal Benning, who can't keep the ball in play. Randall and him scuffling, and Randall comes out on top. The corner flag swaying around as well as Neman tries to run around the outside of his 
Man can't do so. Shrewsbury throwing halfway inside the knot's half. Just out of the halfway line. Thrown down the line. And then back to Mal Benning again. Now back towards goalkeeper Morosi. Long ball forward from him. Too long. Randall will get there first. Back towards Stone. This time his pass is better as it finds Rawlinson. A few disgruntled Notts fans in and around us. But that's, that's a good pass forward towards Chickson, who can cross halfway with it and continue his run. Sprinting down the left-hand touchline. Chickson fakes to cross, then cuts the ball back towards Gosling. 30 yards from goal. Now back from him towards Rawlinson. Not still have it. Oh, loose pass again. Ball bounce has rushed to get there. And he will get there first, but only just... Again, a loose pass, just just lacking concentration. I don't know what it is. It's just not keep doing that, don't well, they? I, I say, it shows you the, 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 the sort of uh, quality you've got to have, the precision you've got to have. You've got to take care with the ball, especially when your players not do, trying to play the ball out around from the back, you know, patient building from the back, not just knocking it in channels. You know, you've got to make sure you, you know, as I say, connect them dots, connect your passes, find your teammates. Because certainly on a night like this, when it's as slippy and as slick as it is, anything a yard or two to the side of your teammate that doesn't find him leaves him in no man's land. That might be a good pass towards Chickson, but Pierre can get it, sorry, Dunkley can get across on the cover and slice it behind for a notch throw. They're just trying to get just trying to get a little bit more incisive with their passes, knots as we pass the half hour mark. Bostock running in the wrong direction. Then Rawlinson it hits his heels and that gives Bowman the ball back. On his near side, Shrewsbury will try and bring the ball forward again. They force backwards with it on this occasion. And Dunkley has to go back to the goalkeeper, Morosi. First time out from him towards Anderson, the far side. Takes the ball down on his knee and plays it in field again. It's a bit loose from him as well. And now Baldwin can win it back for knots. And it's just a case of both sides almost saying, I, I don't want it, you have it. And I think the fans, you, you sense them now. Shrewsbury give the ball away in their own half. I think the fans are saying to not just, just believe in yourself a little bit more. Go forward, we're having all the ball. But then when we get in that final third, we seem a little bit hesitant to, to try and look for that killer pass, you know, try and create something. I think with a little bit more belief, again, it's, it's a makeshift team for not so, so they've not played together uh, at all before. But with a little bit more belief and positivity in their passing, and I think the fans believe that the Shrewsbury team's here for them. Well, as you've been saying, all in... The build-up, they've only won one in nine this season. If you then stretch that to the back end of last season, they've won one in 21 away in all competitions. And so far this season, again, in all competitions, they've scored twice on the road. That's now, of course, three. They've got one here. It's a side that's also got 10 first-team players missing. Granted, the starting 11 is still quite strong. As here come Knox with Aaron the man, trying to run around the outside of his man. And then pulls it back towards Randall, stands up across, which is comfortably behind and out for a goal kick but yeah this you just feel with all those things that are going on all those stats all the all the players you've got out this is a Shrewsbury side who despite being a league above are, are certainly there for the taking oh absolutely yeah they're, they're, you've seen early on that Knotts have acquitted themselves quite well in terms of possession and say absolutely dominating but it, it's just having that belief in the final third and having the quality as well you know it's easy to say oh, just just have a go but you've got to You've got to have a bit more quality and a bit more nous than that, but it's down to them attacking players. Can you just win your individual battles? Can you just, you know, show a little bit of magic, a little bit of composure in that final third and pick a pass or pick a cross that can create problems? The referee will stop it here because an aerial challenge which John Bostock came out on top of, and as he as he landed on his complete blind side, no intention in it at all. I think he's just sort of caught as he's been landing back to ground again. The, the head maybe slightly or just more maybe more the back of a Shrewsbury man Dan Udo it is and he's just gone to his uh, to his just getting back to his feet now and looks like he'll be okay and I said no intention from, from John Bostock who managed to come out on top in that aerial challenge but the referee will restart us by dropping the ball to Knotts halfway inside their own half we played 33 minutes match night from BBC Radio Nottingham all frequencies online for you tonight as well and on uh, BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra it's not Neil Shrewsbury on second round of the FA Cup with myself Adam Hassel and Mark Stallard to my right who grunts slightly there at another misplaced pass across the Notts defence which again they get away with yeah absolutely just get away with it again it's Aidan Baldwin just a bit of lead in his boots he's, he's you know when you need a feather feather pillar he's got a bit of lead in his boots on that occasion trying to find uh, Richard Brindley 
to his right hand side and there's been three or four occasions already Notts were punished for, with a bit of sloppy passing and a slip for the goal there's been two or three times as well when they've nearly been punished because of a sloppy pass a simple pass as well under no pressure 10 15 yard pass but just not finding your teammate they still have a lot of the ball of Notts and are still continuing to do so as they attack the cop in this first half Baldwin on the ball he turns it right towards Brindley who pokes the ball forward towards the man again got his back to goal he's and has to turn this time with it and then move it on towards the left hand side to Bostock ahead of him is Austin who gets the ball now halfway inside the Shrewsbury half ahead of him is Chickson but Austin instead goes back to Bostock through the legs of Bowman to find Rawlinson and then switches it across to the right hand side towards Brindley 15 yards up from the halfway line across the far side is Randall a heavy touch from him he gets away with it as well to find Baldwin square to Rawlinson and on towards this near side to Austin nice first touch then cuts inside his man and then wins it back again Austin can continue his run forward here on the edge of the penalty area pulls it back towards Gosling on his right foot finds Chickson wide left cross in deflects up in the air which and I don't a head it clear Bostock is the first to wrap the loose ball then it's cleared in the other direction and finds a Shrewsbury man in between a three in the black and white but Udo can't keep it and then Brindley and Balls winning goes looking between them can pass it out of danger and again the Knots fans are just trying to get Knots going a bit aren't they because 10 minutes until the break Knots despite having a lot of the ball and sort of controlling territory I don't think they've had a chance really in this game yet no they've not had a chance uh, at all you know I think there's been one ball into a dangerous area near the six yard box hasn't there that, that ricocheted about and Dan Gosling nearly got on the end of it but nothing in terms of, of a chance nothing in terms of a, of a shot on goal and that that's the frustration you can have 80% I suppose about 75% 80% possession for the 35 minutes but not registered a shot or an effort on target and then that's that's the disappointment that's where you've got to be a little bit more forward thinking a little bit more progressive in your passing not have done well to win a throw in for that position because again I think it was Ball was trying to find a crossfield ball which was well behind Randall and Randall did well to sort of make Benning put it out of play when he didn't really need to. Again, also throwing a far side which they take. Now it's Brit with Richard Brindley. In towards Naman, back to Brindley again, five yards up from halfway, back from him to Bostock and he'll have to go back towards Aidan Stone. Bostock fouled off the ball, referee has seen it and will give it eventually. Up against Bowman, the referee will have a word with him. I don't think it looks like anything more as Bostock lies on the ground for a moment. Just sort of left one on him as the uh, as the ball went. Probably, a, again, another sign of, despite leading, Shrewsbury's frustration. Yeah, a little bit of frustration again from the striker. Bowman, the goal scorer in the first minute. You know, And we've seen him and Udo both showing a little bit of frustration because, as you say, despite the, the visitors leading, that they've, they've barely seen the ball. All they've been doing is he's sort of chasing shadows, trying to close down. Knots have been moving the ball proficiently sort of around the halfway line. The problems have come when we've tried to get into the uh, the final third, in the, into a Knots attacking third. But, you know, plenty of possession, and that is frustrating for a striker. Well, you want to see the ball, you want to get chances, you want to you want to see the whites of the opponent's goal and, you know, get near the goalkeeper. But they've not been given chance at all. Shoes have been able to build anything up in this game by themselves. They can knots again, it's with Austin, crosses halfway, and runs forward with it, towards the penalty area he goes, Chickson outside him wide left, first time cross Madam Chickson, across the penalty area, he's cleared away, Chickson will have another go, that's a better looking ball towards the back post, cleared away as far as Richard Brindley who hits one into the ground, which hits the defender Shipley and loops towards Randall Farzad, he digs across into the middle, which is headed clear by Dunkley this time, only as far as Bostock, he turns it back towards Rawlins and not to try and come again. I guess the only thing we're putting crosses in is that they've got three really tall central defenders at Shrewsbury who are probably going to win everything in the air but Knotts will try again now with Austin running a little pirouette around his man and then gives it on towards Gosling Gosling switches it along the ground to Brindley 30 yards out again we'll try a shot from distance Get oh him! yes Richard Brindley with a worldie from 30 yards out into the bottom left corner he doesn't score many for Knotts but when he does they rockets from outside the penalty area, and that's another one. It's probably what it needed. 38 minutes on the clock, it's not one, Shrewsbury one. Well, talk about patience and build-up. We've been waiting 38 minutes for Knotts to have a shot, but when they do, they make it count. It's Richard Brindley, not the source you would have thought it was coming from. Knotts again, 
possession, patient, building up, getting on the left-hand side, Dan Gosling just rolling into space across onto that right-hand channel, the inside right channel, Richard Brindley's about 40 yards from goal, nobody really near him, and Dan Gosling invites it in front, puts the ball in front of him, invites him onto it, he has a touch out of his feet, 25 yards out, thinks, do you know what, let's have a shot, we haven't had a shot yet, and he hits it true, it dips, it bounces into the far corner of the net, hits it well, nothing uh, Marco Morosi could do about it, and it nestles in the far corner, and knocks it back on level terms, one apiece. A goal can just change everything, kind of one apiece now, and now with how Notts have been playing, with the fact it's 1-1, it makes the whole, the whole performance seem so much better. Well, absolutely, yeah, we said there's, there's been nothing wrong with the performance other than you know, having chances at the end of all the possession. Not easy against a team from a division above you, and also not easy when you've made eight changes. It's a team that's sort of getting used to each other as well. But there's an added frustration now as we've got another ball on the pitch, so we're going to have a, a little break in play, a little stoppage. Um, but the other frustration is now you go back to that if only Aidan Baldwin had to yeah. slip to present Shrewsbury <laughs> with that first goal, Notts would be leading and deservedly leading. Just over five to go until half time. It's 1 1 here at Madeleine, second round of the FA Cup between Notts County and Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, as we were saying there, now took the lead less than a minute in after a defensive, literally a defensive slip up. And had a ball across the penalty area for Bowman to tap in, but Richard Brindley from 25 yards have just made it 1 1 and now Notts very much. In the ascendancy, it's with Austin back from him to Rawlinson on halfway. As the drummer in the cop starts to keep his hands warm on what is a bitterly cold evening at Meadow Lane. Now here's Aaron the man. He's got a little bit of space. He's just robbed of possession, but only as far as Gosling, who deserves credit for that goal as well. Now Gosling brings the ball forward, allowed to just keep go about, allowed to keep coming with it. Sorry. And now Austin, with a few little step overs, runs around the outside of his man. Still going, little back heel for Adam Chickson, first time cross, there's a good looking ball towards the middle, headed up in the air, flicked on by Pierre behind him, it's a good defensive header but not still have it with Randall and then Benning just in to stamp the ball out for a Notts throw. Yeah and look at that with a bit more intent, you, you can hear the Notts fans getting behind their team, getting behind their players, just wanting them to believe, hopefully that goal, that equaliser will give them that belief to put the ball in the Shrewsbury area a little bit more. Here's Bostock, right hand side for Notts, has to go back with it to Baldwin inside the centre circle and he lays it on for Rawlinson to run onto and then stop for a second and give it back to Gosling now Baldwin has to go back to Aidan Stone all in green as the mist and the fog continues to pile in you can only really see it when you look up towards the floodlights and you see it in the light it's not okay, in no danger anymore having survived those that pitch inspection earlier on, of course, as well, is Rawlinson. Running towards halfway and then passing halfway and finding a good pass on towards Austin with a good first touch. Rawlinson continues his run. Austin keeps going as well. Pulls a lovely ball across, which is headed away very well by diving Aaron Pierre to put the ball out for a Notts corner. Yeah, absolutely, but that's good play. Notts probing down the left-hand side. Sam Austin trying to bend the ball in with his left foot. Good covering header by Aaron Pierre, but concedes a corner to Notts from their attacking left-hand side. Chickson to take, Austin just next to him. Looks like they might put it into the penalty area here because he's not got a short option. Now they do, Austin comes back to make a short option. Got two around to try and beat, ends up conceding a throw in. Which again, Chickson will be the man to take. He has a couple of options, finds Sam Austin, lets the ball, lets the ball sort of bounce across him so we can turn and try and set knots right down the far touchline with a few passes leads it on towards Brindley shouts of shoot from probably 60 yards out after his goal five or so minutes ago from probably 25 yards out Bostock lays it back to Brindley good forward pull towards Gosling who turns the ball nicely around outside of Benning and then finds Randall who delivers across into the middle again headed away by Pierre Brindley trying to be the first to win it on the edge of the box and do a little bit too keen to do so can't see the debris kick he wants another one <laughs> absolutely he's, he's got the taste for it now Richard Brindley plays the right side of centre half of the three gets his first goal of the season five or so minutes ago and he's, he's looking to pick it up in a very similar area there but 
Referee judges him to c concede a foul. The one thing, one problem lots have got about we're talking about putting balls into the box, you say there, there's three big centre horse for Shrewsbury there. Not so, uh, the equivalent, you may as well throw Snow White in there. We are vertically <laughs> challenged, don't we? So that is another reason why Luke Williams have to play this sort of possession based passing football to work the ball into these areas, these little pockets of space in the inside left, inside right places, inside the area to try and find space in there rather than just putting, you know, big lumpid in the middle crosses in. Shrewsbury again win it inside the knots half. This one a bit more fortuitously. And the try across from deep, which ball's been allowed to go over his head, and it bounces towards Dan Udo, who can surely try and get a shot away. He tries, but he can't do so. He goes to ground. He's not going to get anything for it either, and not just about to get away with that. And now in the other direction, streaming forward is Junior Marais, and sadly is ball forward just deflects off of the trailing heel of a defender to take it away from the path of Aaron the man. But that's a good header. <laughs> Neither side can keep the ball here still. I can't. By the time I'm trying to say what, what, what's happened once, the ball's been given away by them. Yeah, a little bit of a, a, a basketball stone. game there, period, wasn't it? A bit of a golden opportunity for yeah. Dan Udo. The ball was bouncing. He just, he just thought he's, what, eight or nine yards out. He just bouncing up a little bit awkwardly, but he got goal side of Connor Rawlingson, and he just felt just if he pulls the trigger and gets it on target, there's very little Aidan Stone would have been able to do but he doesn't pull the trigger, he wants to get it set perfectly and that just allowed Notts defenders to, to desperately chuck themselves in the way and get in the way of it and eventually managed to smuggle it clear and then as Notts looked to break, a couple of wayward passes and so it becomes that basketball game end-to-end -end that Luke Williams despises so much but at the minute, John Bostock on the ball and Notts back under control of it. 30 seconds until the break, he has flown by this first half, FA Cup second round match night here on BBC Radio Nottingham, Notts 1, Shrewsbury 1, Aaron the man on the ball, lays it on towards Bostock, Gosling making the forward run who gets it now in between a couple, he tries to play one in behind for Randall, Benning as well to watch that all the way, then Gosling has to stop himself from flying into a challenge to try and win the ball back and Shrewsbury do keep it on that far touch line with Anderson who goes long downfield trying to find Bowman, ball's going to let the ball bounce, he's safe to do so, it'll run through to Stone, has to clear from outside his penalty area, more up than away, he's the board saves two minutes, well, out of time. Godling loses out in the aerial challenge, and so Shrewsbury have it again inside their own half with Anderson. Now back to Pierre and across to Dunkley, right-hand side, probably the first time genuinely in his entire half so far that Shrewsbury put, have been allowed to put sort of five, six passes together which they still have it now with Bennett on this far side trying to put one over the top looking for the run well as an offside flag not going to go up because of the run from the midfield and now the three fantastic defending to stop Jordan Shipley who was through and onside the Notts defenders stopped because they thought an offside flag was going to come up which it should have done so if the player was played to receive the ball he left it he knew it was offside Shipley ran from the midfield from an onside position ran straight through a goal and Baldwin sliding across as also so managed to get a goal kick out of it as well well you're right Ultimately, it was fantastic defending from Aidan Baldwin, but it's him and Richard Brinley that stopped. You know, we should know nowadays that the linesman's flag will not go up if a player's offside because they might not be active, and that's exactly what happened there. Not thinking that Udo or Bowman had gone too early, which they may well have done, but it was, as you say, Jordan Shipley breaking from deep in the middle. Not fell asleep, allowed the ball to run past him, and Shipley was in one-on-one. -on -one. Thankfully, his touch just allowed Baldwin to, to slide and get a, a vital interception in. Crossling is... Tackle from behind, not a free kick, which they get on with. Bostock and now Rawlinson inside the Shrewsbury half. Out wide left it comes to Chickson. Infield to Austin. That's a nice gap in between a couple to Bostock. We've got 20 seconds left of first half stoppage time as the ball is rolled on towards goal scorer Brindley. One apiece here, don't forget. Brindley now down the line to Randall, trying to put the ball one side of Benning and run the other doesn't work but the clearance is poor from Shrewsbury only as far as John Bostock who then his pass is poor dearie me what is happening Udo will try and bring the ball forward he's then robbed of it Baldwin can win it back and that'll see the game through to half time which is one apiece there hasn't been many chances but overall it's just a case of both sides not being able to keep the ball yeah absolutely I think not not so be delighted with that first off uh, the way they've played they've dominated possession we say the only thing that's been missing from it is any real end product any threat um, you know we've got a, a fantastic equaliser through Richard Brindley a 25 yard effort but as we were saying in the commentary you know for all the possession we've not been able to get in and around the, the Shrewsbury penalty area and not been able to put any any real dangerous telling balls in uh, in there and, and as a result Marco Morosi's not really had a save to make he's had to pick the ball out the net 
the once from that from that splendid effort from Richard Brinley. Um, but yeah, I mean, Luke, Luke Williams will be pleased with it. And again, you say this is a Knox team without Macaulay Langstaff, without Dan yeah. Crowley, and without David McGoldrick, the usual front three that is so potent. Um, and they, they've more than been a match for the, for the visitors. Luke Williams, as soon as the half-time whistle went there, ran onto the pitch to go and have a word with Dan Gosling all the way until he came back to the tunnel. What do you reckon that's about? Because I think he's played very well, Dan Gosling. I was probably, probably saying, you know, you've been brilliant in that first half. Keep dictating. You know, keep getting on the ball. Him, John Bostock and Sam Austin, as the half went on, grew into the game uh, a little bit more. But I think Dan Gosling's been pulling the strings in the middle, you know, along with, with Bostock particularly. Um, you know, say not so bad, a plenty of the ball. I just I think Luke Williams will say to him in the second half, Go and believe in yourself. You know, go and play like that. Go and connect the passes. Obviously, take a bit bit of care because we've seen, you know, two or three slightly wayward passes and the problems that that can cause. But if I think if not to believe in themselves, I mean, you look at that, they've got Jody Jones and, and uh, Macaulay Langstaff on the bench. Now, I'm sure he won't want to turn to them too early. But I think if they carry on like this, when we get to, you know, if it stays like this for, the, say, the hour mark, I wouldn't be surprised if Luke Williams turns to them and goes, God, we'll throw a little bit more of attacking potency on there and see what we can make happen. Just round of the stats for half time, both sides have had one shot on target and is one apiece. He's been very clinical, but it has felt quite an entertaining game despite there not really being particularly much goal mouth action. I think it's just because Knox are always capable when they've got the ball, final third, they're always capable of just turning it on and creating something at, at really any point, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, let's say Knox will be happy with that. They've, they've dictated the tempo of the game. Shrewsbury have offered nothing at all really it has to be said from their own means that the goal came from a, an unfortunate slip from Aidan Baldwin and I say that it was you know handed on a silver platter that goal you know that they'd have done well to mess that up but you know aside from that you know Aidan Stone hasn't really had a save to make that you know as the, as the stats will say one shot on target each both have been goals um, and neither team have had a shot off target aside from that so you know maybe not a classic <laughs> but you know, Knox will be Knox will be pleased with it, and I think you know Matt Taylor, the, the visiting manager, will will have work to do at half time because I don't think he'll be particularly pleased with how his team's gone about it. Yeah, you can tell the side that must not have very, very much confidence from from their form of late away from home. Thank you for that, Mark Stallard. More from Stallard, of course, in the second half. It's half time here in Madeleine, second round of the FA Cup. It was a horror start with uh, Ryan Bowman putting the visitors in the lead less than a minute into the game after Aidan Baldwin slips on a goal line on the right side of the penalty area allowed a pass to then come in across goal and Bowman found the back of the net with Aidan Stones having no chance at all of making a save not completely dominated the game in terms of possession from there and finally that possession turned into a chance which turned into a goal Richard Brindley from 25 yards out Gosling finding him with a pass across to the right hand side and Brindley running onto it taking a touch and smashing it into the bottom left corner and that means that at half time here in Meadow Lane it's Notts County 1 Shrewsbury Town 1 Good stuff. Adam Hassel and Mark Stallard bringing you the first half of Notts County versus Shrewsbury. Two shots, or well, one each and two goals. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second half. Uh, elsewhere in the FA Cup, it's goalless at half time between York City and Wigan Athletic. And uh, elsewhere in the uh, footballing world, uh, England women are in the uh, Nations League uh, this evening. They're currently trailing uh, the Netherlands by two goals to nil at half time. And in the Championship, just the one game, Preston North End and Queen's Park Rangers, uh, about half an hour gone uh, up at Deepdale, and it's nil nil in that game. We're back uh, with the guys down at Meadow Lane for the second half shortly. But uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit of ice hockey next. On BBC iPlayer. Now. And where we are? Does it just get cold? No, 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 no. Doctor, you can get the TARDIS back, can't you? Use the Sonic. If the TARDIS is in danger, it goes away. And it only comes back once the danger is gone. There's something that's so bad the TARDIS ran away. Egypt. What are they? Doctor! Mama! Their time has come. Doctor Who continues tomorrow on BBC iPlayer. Night. BBC Radio Nottingham. It's half time at Meadow Lane. Notts County 1, Shrewsbury 1. Uh, let's focus now on the Nottingham Panthers, who are gearing up for their first double game weekend since returning to the ice following the tragic death of forward Adam Johnson in October. Uh, Panthers are away to Cardiff in the Elite League tomorrow before taking on Dundee United. Uh, Dundee United, uh, Dundee Stars at the uh, National Ice Centre on Sunday. On BBC Radio Nottingham last night, uh, Panthers defenceman Carl Neal uh, became the first player uh, to give a UK interview since the tragedy, uh, speaking about a host of topics, uh, a host of topics, including 
uh, the return to the ice and how the team dealt with what happened and how things are now. Doing better, doing better. Things. Uh, it's fun to kind of get back uh, into a rhythm. It's fun to kind of be around the guys, be around uh, just in the city and, and get back to somewhat of a normal routine. And, and it's cool to kind of, you know, not be stuck at home. The break was nice, but it's fun to kind of get things rolling again and, and try to kind of uh, keep pushing in, in the right direction. After the events happened, what was your way of dealing with it? Yeah, I, I stuck around for a bit with our teammates. For me, myself, I, I actually went back to, to Montreal for, for about a week and a half uh, just to be like, around family and friends and kind of like, like it was very heavy kind of to be in in this atmosphere. Um, so I, it was really kind of refreshing to, to not be inside of it, you know, and kind of have like a, like a clean slate. Um, and then obviously that little break was kind of beneficial to coming back and and hitting it head on, you know, and just coming back into it and, and dealing with it. So for me, it was taking like a little step back and then resetting with family and friends back home and then coming back and, and gearing up for the rest of the year. You don't have to answer this. Was there ever any thoughts in your mind about potentially not returning to the ice? No, not for me. Like, obviously it was it was, it was was terrible, everything that happened, but I think just the fact that it's weird to say, but like going through it with, with such a, like I said, like early on, we're such a tight group. It's it's one of those things that it's if it's happened and, and, and you're part of it and you can be able to speak with people who can support you and things like that, like there's there's like a special bond that's formed within mm. a team or within any type of person that goes through that type of thing. And for me it was like, Yeah, no, we're gonna come back and we're all gonna give it our best and, and we're gonna make it we're gonna try and turn it into something somewhat positive for the group. So for me it was it was not even something that crossed my mind. I was just really looking forward to coming back and trying to push together with, with with this team that has a really special bond. It must have been a really strange but good night, the the Adam Johnson Memorial game, because it must have been, right, we're back on the ice, and you must have all been eager to get back on the ice. But at the same time, emotions in that game were crazy. The noise in that arena was mad. Yeah, like, it was wild because I never thought, like, leading up to that, I never thought in my life, like, I've played in multiple charity games or games to raise money for a fund or things like that and it was the first one I was actually like nervous for and like before the game I was like man like like I was nervous to play in like like a, a game that didn't have any meaning on the standings you know it was just for fun and but like getting back on the ice was something that was I think everyone had on their mind was like how are we going to take this as a, as a group and um, coming out with the support of the fans like that warm-up was was special like we also have it saved on our phone like everyone had goosebumps like it was it was an emotional uh, entrance, and I mean, we were very grateful for uh, for that, and it definitely helped us uh, to kind of deal with that that process too. How have you dealt, or maybe you've not even thought about it, that in the space of a week or so, with everything that happened, all of a sudden, eyes of the entire world were on ice hockey in this country, but more so, eyes were on the Nottingham Panthers. How how was that? It was very particular, like like you said, like from from one day to the next, things just switched, and it really speaks volumes on like everybody's specific support circles, and also just how tight the hockey community is, and like um, getting messages from people who you haven't ever even played with, just trying to send their love or like say they're thinking about you. It's like people will take the time out of their day to kind of support you and, and think about the team. And even though they might not have an idea of what it was like to be a part of it, like just the fact of them reaching out and taking the time really means a lot to to every single person in this whole organization. And it was very, very strange to have that kind of light on us for, for that amount of time. But I think rightfully so, like Adam was a, was a great human and, and he, he left um, a great impact on, on many people's lives. So I think it, in that regard, it made sense to kind of have that light on us too. So, yeah. Last week, you got back on the ice where there was points up for grab. How how was that? It was better than I thought it would be, but it was also to be expected in the sense that maybe our systems and like our team play wasn't necessarily where it was before everything happened. Um, you know, it was so long since we've played that like uh, we were still kind of trying to get our, our feet back under us and we weren't really either in top physical condition as we were before so I think overall I think it was a good game on our behalf obviously I th- we might have deserved to get a point uh, maybe even two um, we didn't really get the bounces but like overall I think it was somewhat of a, of a successful game back and it was nice to kind of get that first one under us with all the fans there too and kind of turn the page and get things going so how are you feeling ahead of this weekend back to uh, 
how are the legs feeling ahead of a double header? <laughs> feeling good, actually. I think it'll it'll be a good one. We we had a really good game against Cardiff uh, at home a couple a month and a half ago or so, and Dundee too. We had a good match against them. So, I mean, the league honestly this year is so competitive. Like if you look at the standings from from one to to nine, I think or two to nine, there's like two or three points separate them. So. Um, it's really interesting to kind of prepare the whole week and then play those back to backs, but uh, no, the legs are legs are feeling good. So we'll start with uh, Saturday, but uh, looking forward to it. That's the Panthers defenseman Carl Neal, who was on Aaron's guest, uh, or Aaron's show last night on In the Game on BBC Radio Nottingham. If you missed the chat, uh, you can hear the full interview uh, via BBC Sounds. Just search for In the Game. Uh, let's have a quick word uh, with your Panthers r- reporter Chris Gadsby. Uh, he touched on it there, uh, Carl, about the uh, the fitness going into uh, into a, a double header for the first time in, in quite some time how did they look uh, last weekend against Belfast yeah they they looked good last weekend um were slightly tiring towards the end in my opinion which is understandable because they hadn't played for for three weeks in uh in a meaningful game um the memorial game against uh, Manchester obviously was uh, very much uh, just about getting back onto the ice but uh, still had a good showing in the in the 4-2 defeat um, but it is going to be really important for the Panthers to uh, to hit that fitness peak uh, as quickly as they can again because as, as Carl alluded to there it is so tight in the Elite League just six points separating first from ninth as it stands there is one game going on tonight but uh, six points from first to ninth as it stands Panthers with uh, at least three games in hand they've got six games in hand on some um, and uh, we with only being six points off the top of the table, they do have a really good opportunity to uh, still make this a really good season uh, in Nottingham. And uh, there was a debut uh, last week for uh, Simon Dupree, uh, another new player as well, uh, brought in this week, Austin Farley. How do you, well, obviously you've not seen Austin Farley just yet, but Simon, how did he do? And how do you think Austin will do? Yes, uh, really nice assist from Simon uh, for Panthers' second goal on on Sunday. He took a couple of penalties though, so he needs to learn a little bit what he can get away with in this league and how the officials like to call it. Looking forward to seeing what Austin uh, will do on Sunday, and interested as well to see wh- exactly where in that forward uh, forward twelve players he slots in. Excellent stuff, Chris Adsby. Thank you very much. Uh, Chris will be at uh, at the game on Sunday for the uh, Nottingham Panthers. Right, uh, just about to uh, see the players emerge from the tunnel at Meadow Lane. We'll be back there shortly for the second half of Notts County versus Shrewsbury. Can iguanas really run that fast? Will the monkeys make their escape? How on earth do they even film this stuff? When you're immersed in the natural wonders of our planet... There's no feeling like live TV. However you're watching, a TV licence is your must-have pass to over 400 live TV channels, packed with facts you can't help talking about. And it also funds everything you love from the BBC, including live radio, like this. Match Night. BBC Radio Nottingham. Yes, match night from BBC Radio Nottingham. Just about to uh, emerge, well, see the players emerge from the tunnel for the second half. Notts County 1, Shrewsbury 1. Uh, before we do that, let's have a reminder of the equaliser because it was some hit from Richard Brindley. Gosling switches it along the ground to Brindley. 30 yards out. Again, we'll try a shot from distance. Oh, yes! Richard Brindley with a worldie from 30 yards out into the bottom left corner. He doesn't score many for Notts, but when he does... They rockets from outside the penalty area, and that's another one. It's probably what it needed. 38 minutes on the clock, it's Notts 1, Shrewsbury 1. And that rocket from Richard Brindley means that Notts County and Shrewsbury are level at the break. Let's hand you over to our match commentary team for the second half of Notts County versus Shrewsbury in the second round of the FA Cup. Former Notts County striker Mark Stallard and Adam Hassel. Thank you very much, Jake. Yes, one apiece here at Meadow Lane at half-time. No standard players yet emerging from the tunnel for the second half. I can tell you that it feels a lot colder than it did 10 minutes ago as well. I went downstairs to get a cup of tea, which in itself is questionable, but we'll not talk about that. Come back upstairs again, and we are feeling the cold now, aren't we still? Yeah, absolutely. The Penguins were shivering in there at (laughs) half-time, but hopefully the football in the second half is going to keep us warm. Indeed. Not subs out there during half-time. There's uh, a few of them have now gone back into the tunnel again a bit early. The likes of Jody Jones and and McCauley Langstaff. The Notch players make their way out down in front of us. A quick head count. And other than Aidan Stone, who's already made his way out ahead of them all, I don't think there's going to be any, any changes, unless I can't count to 11. The Donuts players are out to our left, and now here come the Shrewsbury players as well, led out by their captain, Shea Dunkley. 
think I think both sides will probably be saying that the game's there to be won, but from a Notts perspective, it certainly is there to be won, isn't it, in this second half? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how Shrewsbury went about the game. OK, they got a goal within the first minute that was gifted to them, and that might have just, you know, changed the way they went about the first half tactically. They, they sat off Notts, they tried to be compact. You know, Notts not were allowed to have possession on the halfway line, allowed to build up, and, and as a result, absolutely dominated possession. When Notts really went forward and looked like they believed it, then they looked like they could cause uh, Shrewsbury some problems. So, you know, good for Notts that Richard Brindley got them that equaliser, as we said at half time. There's only been two efforts on goal in that first half, and both of them were goals. So, with a little bit more belief and a little bit more quality in the final third for Notts, then the game is certainly there for them. Indeed. Just before second half gets started, I've got enough time to uh, give a shout out to Michael Harrison. This is his 3,000th three, three Knots game tonight. Started coming to Adelaide in 1965, 58 years, 7 months, and 11 days ago. His 3,000th Knots game tonight. Michael Harrison, well done. Some achievement. We are back underway for the second half. The ball knocked back to Aidan Stone. Knots attack the empty family stand away to our right in this second half. With a place in the third round of the FA Cup on offer. I think what's definitely fair to say from Knots team selection specifically, of course Shrewsbury only made one change, but they've got such such injuries they probably couldn't really afford to make any more. Definitely Luke Williams, eight changes being made, will not want this game to go to a replay, will he? Well, no, that's the thing nowadays, isn't it? Replays are, are not welcome additions to the calendar. Um, so... I imagine both managers will want their team to go and win it in the 90 minutes. Sounds an obvious statement, but it is uh, particularly true with these cup games. Not the start of the second half, better than the start of the first. At this point in the first half, they'd conceded a goal from a defensive slip. But the ball is with Aidan Stone, <laughs> right on cue. Now just a sidestep uh, Ryan Bowman and very nearly make me look stupid. But thankfully not, and not play it out of trouble very nicely on this occasion with Aidan Baldwin who can just stride forward with it knock it on towards Austin now Bostock outside of him left hand side is Rawlins and no changes for Shrewsbury by the way at half time either as we said not that they've got too many options that they probably like to turn to on the bench there's now Brindley has it and outside of him is Randall back to Brindley once more halfway inside to the Shrewsbury I'll try to pull him in behind for Randall he'll do well and Anderson gets lucky he slides to Grand maybe didn't really need to could have probably just could afford to stay on his feet but I just knocked the ball off of Will Randall, I don't think he quite meant to. And that wins Shrewsbury a goal kick. Just managed to grab a word with Michael Moore, the, the Shrewsbury uh, director of football, a, a lad who I did my apprenticeship at Derby with him, and I was speaking to him, and he was very complimentary about how Knox had played in the first half. He was also bemoaning the Shrewsbury Town injury list uh, as to, you know, when I questioned how they'd gone about it in the first half, but he was very complimentary about Luke Williams' team and the way they played football and the way they kept football. So, uh, kept the football, should I say. So, uh, yeah, I think he's the... Luke Williams' way is impressing many across football. Certainly is, isn't it? Yes, he gets accolades against pretty every side he comes against. Whenever the opposition do their press conferences before games, they'll often, if not always, talk about how good not to play football. Here's Naman. Outside of him is Austin, sprinting towards the edge of the penalty area, left-hand side, pulls it back towards Naman, takes it down his chest, too much on it on that chest down and it runs bounces through towards the goalkeeper but there seems to be more incision in the opening state of the second half from Knotts yeah well I hope so I mean, I'm sure that would be the one message that Luke Williams will have given his team at half time you know they, they played football brilliantly well kept the ball brilliantly well in the first half but I think he, if they can play a bit more progressively play through the lines a little bit more with a little bit more intent then I say the game's there for them Randall low cross finds the rise back to go over the penalty area does well to keep it now find the man lays it on towards Bostock he will try a shot which deflects surely it does takes it behind for Knox's third corner of the evening well that's the first first shot that's not got ended in a goal there John Bostock <laughs> 25 probably 26 27 yards out even a swerving effort slight deflection on it takes it three or four yards wide of the right hand upright for Marco Morosi and out for a corner to Knox from their attacking left hand side which they take quickly Austin will try and dig out across towards the middle keeper unchallenged Morosi inside a six yard box can claim and run towards the edge of his penalty area and then bowl it out towards Anderson on this near side of Shrewsbury left will try and turn it down the line towards Mal Benning who is so clearly offside but a bit like with the first half Bowman isn't and Randall gets something on it ends up being a bit of a cross which then Rawlinson back heads and it falls to Bowman and he can put it in it's awful defending from Notts County no other words for it Colin Rawlinson trying to back header to Aidan Stone with Ryan Bowman there lurking to just pick the ball up edge the six yard box 
and tap it past Aidan Stone. Not again, completely the victims of their own downfall. We've only played four second half minutes. It's criminal defending from Notts County, which has made it Notts County 1, Shrewsbury Town 2. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, whatever word, whatever adjective you want to describe that defending for, schoolboy is unfair to schoolboys. It's another ball down the left-hand side, and, and we saw it in the first half. The, the, the runner was offside, clearly offside, and Will Randall, it's over his head, but he stops. And the licence flag hasn't gone up, the referee's whistle hasn't gone, and then it runs on, and then all of a sudden Bowman's in the clear. Then he tries to lob the ball into the middle. It, Udo, uh, Udo just manages to, to make a bit of a nuisance of himself. Connor Rawlinson's in there. He tries to head it back, I think, back to Aidan Stone. But all he succeeds in doing is heading it straight back to Ryan Bowman, who's on the edge of the not six-yard box with nobody around him. He can't believe he's looking as the ball drops. He just goes, well, I'll, I'll put that in the goal then from six yards. And the visitors again, thanks to some absolute calamitous defending from Knotts, find themselves ahead for the second time. It's Knotts 1, Shrewsbury 2, and we've had five minutes of the second half. Yeah, you can, as you said there, you can pretty much pick your adjective. It's any one of them, no matter how strong, will pretty much sum up that phase of play from Shrewsbury that led to the goal from a Knotts perspective. Criminal was the word I went for. It got oh, Brad Brindley giving the ball away. What is happening? Now Udo can run towards the penalty area, left-hand side. He's got an overlapping run outside of him in Shipley. He's forced back for a second. Shipley now can dig across him, which ricochets and bounces low along the ground. Pull back the edge of the box towards Kenny, who can then get a shot away second time, which goes over the bar. And he might feel like he should have done better from the edge of the D, from inside the D, in fact. But again, this time Richard Brindley with just a soft, loose back pass. At what point do not just realise what they're doing and stop doing it? Well, you know, I say it's mistakes, individual mistakes. You. you it's very difficult to account for that if, if, you know, on that occasion Richard Brindley picks a pass but doesn't see the Shrewsbury man and plays it straight to him, ten yards inside the knots off and for, for a time being there Shrewsbury had a two against two, thankfully Knotts managed to get bodies back there and eventually ended up with, with Kenny having a shot from inside the deer, the edge of the box, got underneath it, but uh, yeah, Knotts masters of their own downfall, you know, Shrewsbury haven't created themselves a chance in this game, no. yet they've scored two goals. Quite, I, I was going to say, quite often you're hearing in post-match interviews, managers will say, oh, no, we gifted goals to the opposition. Th that has never been more true. But here come North with Will Randall, goes inside of his man, and tries a shot over the bar. The decent effort from Will Randall, didn't pick out either corner, just went for power. With the goalkeeper pretty much rooted to the spot, threw an arm up towards the air, but it went over the crossbar, not by much. Another decent chance to make a play for Notts in this second half, but over the bar on this occasion from Will Randall. Well, that's probably the best chance Notts have had. We've not had many. Obviously, Richard Brindley's goal from 25 yards. But that time, yeah, little ball into that out inside right channel. He's coming in off the line, making an out-to-win run. Will Ranley just managed to get there ahead of Anderson and toes the ball inside. So he's attacking the, the sort of inside right edge of the Shrewsbury penalty area. And the, the defender's not really coming across to him because they've got men to cover. He maybe could have took it a little bit closer, but then he opts to pull the trigger from about 17, 18 yards out. Needs to hit it low and go for that far post. Unfortunately, gets underneath and it goes a yard or so over the crossbar. 52 and a half on the clock. Knotts 1, Shrewsbury 2. Shrewsbury scoring early on in the first half and not quite as early, but early on in the second half as well. Ryan Bowman with both the Shrewsbury goals. He turned 32 yesterday. He's been gift-wrapped with a bow on top. Two presents today. But Knotts come forward again. And now you just feel like the pattern of the game is going to just follow what it was like in the first half with Knotts making it difficult for themselves but having all the ball to try and work an opening and get back on level terms again it's with Aidan Baldwin he turns it square to Rawlinson just short of halfway now Baldwin again he goes back towards Stone I think like I say it's half time I'm surprised at the way Shrewsbury went about things in that first half sitting off knots you know a low block, if you like, getting back in their own own defensive half and just keeping players behind the ball. Because, you know, we know that if you attack this Notts team and press them, there is a mistake defensively in them. And Crikey me, Shrewsbury have been re rewarded with, with two mistakes that have gift-wrapped two goals to them, and they haven't even pressed us particularly hard tonight. So, you know, it, it just surprised me the way they went about things. Not just making things so difficult for themselves with moments of sloppiness that are being made to pay for. Gosling, square towards Bostock who can turn and open the pitch up and then lay a nice ball on towards Adam Chickson left-hand side in line with the penalty area, a few step-overs, give it in towards Austin, trying to do a give-and-go, it doesn't quite work. 
and Shrovey will be able to clear from inside the penalty area. Same position that Aidan Baldwin slipped from as Dunkley finds a pass on towards the far side. Now back to Bennett. Down the line from him. Bowman can't keep it in play. Knotts will have a throw in. The last twice that the sides of Matt at Madeleine it's finished 3-2. One win apiece. The last one in 2014 was a 3-2 win for Shrewsbury. Jack Grealish and Alan Sheen with the Knotts goals that day. He went 2-0 up at actually at one point. Before Jimmy Spencer was sent off. He wouldn't rule off it being 3-2 again today, to be honest. And Shrewsbury again win the ball back. Just short of halfway this time. Running towards the far side is Winchester. He goes back into his own half. Now Dunkley on the ball. In towards Kenner. Back to the goalkeeper, Morosi. Takes a touch. Marais chasing him down. He goes long to Morosi. Which Brindley will take that on the chest. And then will do well to keep hold of. He just about manages to find him balled and then he gets into all sorts of problems. And now they're in and Bowen's in for the hat trick and he has got it. It's 3-1. If you thought the first one was calamitous, then you should have seen the second one. If you think the second one's calamitous, then D and me, you need to see the third one. It is I said it last time, it is absolutely criminal defending from Notts County. I'm not sure what Richard Brindley's trying to do. Even more so, I'm not sure what Aidan Baldwin's trying to do. Trying to do a dummy with no one behind him. Concedes possession. Bowman, as I said, turned 32 yesterday. He has been given three presents with ribbons and bows and all the what you'd like on top of them. It is absolutely abject defending from Notts County. They have gifted Shrewsbury all three goals. It's Notts 1, Shrewsbury 3. I mean gobsmacked is the word to watch some of these some of this defending the individual errors the decisions that are being made that I mean it's comical it, you yeah. know it, it would be funny if it wasn't so painful you know the ball has dropped and Richard Brinley tried to take it on his chest fair enough you know he's not under under pressure but then sort of dithers with the ball doesn't know what to do falls on the ball he's under pressure then and then managed to scramble the ball to Aidan Baldwin he tries to sell a dummy to the striker, which he does, then sells another dummy, which dummies himself. He sort of slips over, gets tangled up with the ball, and I think it's, it's Udo just toes the ball into the path of Ryan Bowman. As you say, it's his birthday yesterday. He's been gift-wrapped a hat-trick tonight where he can't believe it. He's not had to do anything other than apply a finish when put in one-on-one with a goalkeeper, and on a couple of them, he's not really even had a goalkeeper to beat. So, absolute comical... Catastrophic defending from Knotts. Just it beggars belief. You cannot believe what you're watching in and amongst a performance where Knotts have been so competent with the ball yeah. that it's three of the worst goals you will ever see conceded in a season, let game, alone yeah. in the same game. <laughs> Madeleine is just silence. It is it is dumbfounded at what it is watching. I, I I can't believe it myself. The first one you can almost accept. Sometimes defenders slip and it's unfortunate. Of course it is. The second one really is is in itself awful defending and somehow the third one makes the first two just look like nothing I can't I can't believe what I'm seeing here 57 minutes played not so, not, not so still in it they've had a lot of the ball they're creating chances in this second half they are 3-1 down it'll take something to get back into but dear me you can't defend like this at any level of the game not at, at any level of the game well, that's it. When you play against a team from a higher higher division, you know, I'd say Shrewsbury have struggled to create anything. The, the goals have come from things we've absolutely gift wrapped for them with just laughable defending. It's got to be said now, look, we know how Luke Williams wants to, his team to play. We want to pass the ball. We're not ones for just knocking the ball long. But there comes a moment when, as a defender, you have to make that decision of what you're going to do and be sure about it. Because at the end of the day, you're judged by the decisions that you make. And if you make the wrong decisions too often, then you find yourself out of the team. And, and like I say, some of the decision-making on an individual basis tonight has been, well, laughable almost. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as that goal went in, I looked down to the bench thinking, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Lee Williams makes changes straight on the back of that. I think, I think something's being readied. In fact, yes, I can see Jody Jones down below as I think I don't think he'll be the only one who comes on not 3-1 down as not now win the ball high up the field through a poor Shrewsbury pass and Knotts will try and build again it's now with Brindley plays a 1-2 with Gosling as we approach the hour mark on match night from BBC Radio Nottingham also on five sports extra for you this evening as well and online in the UK in the second round of the FA Cup Knotts 1, Shrewsbury 3. Rawlinson has to turn the ball backwards to Baldwin. Doesn't try a dummy this time. Goes back to Stone first time. 
and then gives Baldwin the ball back. Is that Ollie Tipton, I think, maybe coming on? And I think that's Langstaff, isn't it, as well? He's not got his top on yet, but I think that is. Yeah, there's certainly Langstaff movement down well. there. Yeah, Macaulay Langstaff's just put his shirt on, so I think he's gonna gonna see some action. As we're in the 60th minute of the game, not in possession of the ball. And we're well ready in at least a double change, maybe even a triple change. Austin does well to escape a couple of challenges on that far side, can't escape a third one. And Shreve can clear downfield right into the chest of Udo, tries to lump it up in the air and then tries to do the same thing again and does manage to turn it over his head downfield where Baldwin wins the aerial challenge. Godling can turn it square to Bostock, he lays it back to Baldwin again. And Knox will try and build once more. Now Brindley crosses the halfway line with the ball. Outside of him is Gosling. Now Will Randall. Back from him to Brindley again. Infield to Baldwin inside his own half. And then square to Rawlinson, left-hand side. Not again. Pace with the builder. Not 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 to change how they play. Nor nor should they. To be honest, it's it's not the it's not the style of play that's let them down. It's it, it's it's individual glaring errors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's where the frustration is, and the coach you, you feel for Luke Williams because you can't legislate for that. But here, here come knots on the inside right. Often tried an early cross, which is hooked away from the edge of the box into the D on the edge of the penalty area, and then cleared. Aim. I mean, Shrewsbury aren't aren't playing passes around knots or anything like that. They get the ball there and they clear it downfield to absolutely nobody. They're just giving knots the ball back to to build again. Can they hold on? With a two-goal lead for half an hour. It'll be very interesting because Gosling fizzes the ball on towards Chickson. He's got Mal, um, Aaron Pierre very close to him on that far side and then brings him down and that wins not a free kick touching that left-hand touchline. And will that be a chance not to make some changes? Don't think yet. The free kick is taken. Bostock gets it. He now plays it square to Brindley. In towards Austin inside the final third for Knotts. He goes back to Brindley again. And then down the line is Austin. Infield to Bostock. Square to Austin again, still halfway inside of Shrewsbury half. Austin then goes back to Baldwin. Plays a little pass in between the lines to Gosling. Gives it square to Rawlinson. Everybody far forward here for Knotts as Chickson now is on the ball. He gives it to Gosling. Now the man back to goal. Does well to turn and then play it into a good position for Chickson to run onto. Thought the first time cross, thinks again. Instead finds the man. His pullback just about finds John Bostock. The deepest outfield knots player is Richard Brindley on the ball, who is halfway inside the Shrewsbury half. They are camped inside Shrewsbury territory, trying to create an opportunity from all this possession in a good position, trying to work the ball side to side with, with pace. Austin, back onto the right-hand side is Gosling. Now down the line towards Randall, in line with the penalty area. Pulls it back to Gosling once more. Has to go back to Brindley, square from him to Baldwin. Forward to the man, lays it on first time to Bostock, and he lays it off first time to Rawlinson. Then down that far touchline it goes to Chickson, back to Rawlinson again. Approaching triple figures of passes in this build-up, I'm sure now. Now Brindley has it on halfway. Jones and Langstaff have to get through another warp in a second. Waiting on the uh, touchline to come on. As Austin loads, rolls the ball in towards the man, he can't keep it though. Up against Pierre, his clearance is pretty poor it was Kenner in fact and now it's with Marias who tries one and it goes comfortably wide of Morose's left hand post and now here come those Notts County changes it's going to just be the double substitution at least for now Jody Jones and Macaulay Langstaff the two that are going to come on they will take the place of Will Randall which I imagine will be pretty much like for like for Jody Jones first player on the left in fact it won't be like for like it'll See Jody Jones going towards the far side and the man coming right hand side and Carl Rawlinson's the other one who's going off and McCauley Langstaff. Yeah, I think that's going to mean a bit of a change, isn't it? Connell Rawlinson's been playing as the left side of the of three centre halves. I think Adam Chickson will move inside one and, and take his place. Jody Jones goes into his normal position on the left wing back uh, role. Aaron Naman has come out onto the right hand side in place of where Will Randall was playing. And McCauley Langstaff will go as the furthest man forward with well, probably. And we'll see whether it's alongside Junior Marais or whether Marais will drop just a little bit deeper uh, and players at a two alongside Sam Austin behind Langstaff. 
there's a bit more familiarity about this sort of lineup, and, and you would say a bit more threat in the wing back areas for Notts with with Jody Jones on the left and Aaron the man on the right now. Which they might need with how with how deep and compact Shrewsbury are playing, particularly with the 3-1 lead which they have. 64 minutes played. Sam Austin on the ball. Halfway inside the Shrewsbury half, lays it forward a couple of yards to the man. Now Austin again, runs in field with it, and still, and then goes back to. Baldwin, first time forward to Brindley. He passes halfway with a roll of the ball to Naman. He nearly loses out, but Brindley's there to help him. And now Baldwin goes back to Stone. He gives it back to Baldwin first time. That's better from Knotts. Baldwin turns the ball back to Stone once more, this time unpressured. He can pass the ball out towards Gosling. He brings it forward to Bostock, lays it back to Gosling first time. As Gosling approaches halfway, again finds Bostock the good ball forward. He runs in the field with it, gives it back to Gosling once more. He now sets Chickson away left-hand side with Jones outside of him. Jones on the ball now for his first touch of the game. Edge of the penalty area, left-hand side. Can't beat his man, Bennett. And then we'll try and not foul him. Bennett on that far side is... Eventually, the free kick is given to Shrewsbury. Jones probably had a few bites, which probably were fouled. And I think probably let go of him and stopped fouling. And then, then, then that's when the referee gave it. And Shrewsbury had a free kick right back area. Yeah, just a little bit of a soft, soft foul. No need for Jody Jones to get tight there. He's, he's just tried to buy himself a yard, hasn't he? Then good defending by Bennett, just takes the ball off him. He's five yards away from his own defensive corner, flagging that right back spot, and no need to commit a foul. But he does. 65 minutes on the clock. That's 3 1 behind. Can they find a response? We've got 25 minutes of uh, normal time remaining. But McCauley Langstaff's on the pitch. Jody Jones. He's on the pitch, a couple of substitutions made, showing the intent of Luke Williams to get themselves back into this game. And, you know, in terms of you know play, they've been the better team. But bizarrely, through individual errors, defensive errors, calamitous defensive errors, find themselves 3-1 behind. Yeah, it's quite remarkable that Shrewsbury arrived here today in all competitions, having scored twice away from home all season. Tonight, in 66 minutes, they scored three. All in the manager in their previous 11 games, that is. The man will try and run around the outside of his man here and does so and then wins not to throw in. In line of the penalty area, right hand side. Taking himself back to Brindley, the Knotts goal scorer. So he made it 1 1 at one point in this game. In the first half, it's 3 1 to Shrewsbury now. Adam Chickson on the ball. Now Baldwin has it inside the centre circle. Forward to Brindley. Not too much movement sort of between the lines from Knott's trying to work it from side to side Jackson has to go back to Baldwin finds a pass square to Brindley just walks forward with it for a second halfway side of Shrewsbury half the man outside of him he's forced backwards though to Baldwin with it lays it in towards Gosling does well to turn away from trouble and then find Austin he fizzes a pass in towards Brindley Gosling did well to win it back initially and then four shows would play it long so Baldwin can again keep Knotts in comfortable possession <laughs> comfortable maybe is quite the right word to use with their Knotts play so far today but right, I thought like he was thrown to the floor there against Pierre nothing doing from the referee and now Morosa the goalkeeper clears downfield very poorly and out of play for Knotts throwing on halfway left hand side it's a bizarre game isn't it as we're three quarters at the three quarter point mark 67 and a half minutes on the clock you know you feel like Knotts have been in control of the game. Shrewsbury haven't been able to create a chance of their own making, yet the visitors are 3-1 ahead. Explain that to me. I'm watching the game and I can't quite see what's, what's unfolding. I can't quite believe what's unfolding in front of our heads. Three ridiculous errors that have gifted you know, the lead to Shrewsbury, but Knotts have been, I wouldn't say dominant, because they've not created too many chances themselves, but in terms of possession and having the ball and... Things like that, they've absolutely battered Shrewsbury, but it's about putting the ball in the back of the net and, and not so learning an important lesson tonight. Again, really, I guess. Chickson has it inside the Shrewsbury half. Trying to trying to find a forward ball. Everyone trying, trying to find a forward ball. It's not always on. Now Godling is allowed to turn through the lines. Goes to ground, free kick. In a decent position, it's pretty central. Maybe slightly left of centre, but only just. And it's probably exactly 30 yards out. Maybe too far out for a shot, but probably roughly the same distance, not quite the same position on the pitch, but about the same distance that Richard Brindley did score from. Yeah, for those Knotts fans who remember, John Bostock is over the ball. Think John Bostock at Wrexham last season. 
it's about that sort of distance as you say probably spot on 30 yards out the wall just a, a couple of yards outside the 18 yard box as you say almost what about a yard left of center we know he's got it in his locker now would be a very opportune time to him to reproduce it about to enter the last 20 minutes I could do the goal pretty quickly if they are gonna force at least a replay Bostock and Baldwin the two that are over it Bostock will go for goal it nicks off the wall and out for a notch corner on the far side their fourth of the after of the evening sorry true we get to have one in fact and Jones sprints across the far side to take Bostock the short option then back up the line to Jones who runs in field with it and then he's dispossessed Bostock tries to win the ball back can't do so up against Winchester Marias can with the help of Bostock as well now Jones runs up the line in the wrong direction but keeps not in possession by going back to Chickson now ball players we do now tick into the final 20 Notts 1 Shrewsbury 3 on match night from BBC Radio Nottingham Sam Austin wide right lay the ball back to Brindley to run in field with it and give it to Baldwin square pass to Chickson got a little bit of space ahead of him momentarily to shut off you can find Jones and back to Chickson once more and now back from him to Baldwin yeah, really difficult for Notts. You can see his Shrewsbury there that the furthest forward man is Udo and he's about 40 yards from his own goal. They've got all 11 players, and, well, certainly all 10 outfield players, in about 25-yard gap from defence to the furthest forward player. Very difficult for Notts to find space. They do well here to find Gosling. Now Aaron, a man has it wide right, but now again Shrewsbury have everybody back behind the ball again. Brindley runs in field with it, goes back to Baldwin. And back out to this near right hand side to Austin who's done well to beat the first man inside a penalty area now is Sam Austin just loses it for a second him and the man maybe getting each other's way slightly and Mal Benning will try and clear it's this cleared away in the end by Anderson up towards Udo tangling with Baldwin and keeping possession and then Benning sets away Winchester on that far side who slides to ground Bostock guilty of the free kick which is also going to see John Bostock yellow carded which I don't think he can have too many complaints with really trying to stop that counter attack and did so <laughs> yeah Winchester just got got the wrong side of him at in and John Bostock just tugging a little bit of shirt trying to keep up with him trying to halt the Shrewsbury counter attack which he did he concedes a free kick in the centre circle it takes a booking for his troubles and will allow Luke Williams to make another double substitution indeed it's an interesting one Dan Gosling is going off for James Sanderson a debut for the 17-year-old who turned 17 yesterday joined Notts at under-8 level and an attacking midfielder. He is on for his Notts debut as also coming on for Notts is Ollie Tipton. He takes place of Richard Brindley. And I'll leave that for you to start to work out who goes where. Well, I, whether Tipton will go into a back three, I assume he will. A straight swap for Richard Brindley. And James Sanderson, a new name for all of us. First time he's been involved in the... Well, it's, it's the 20 tonight, yes. isn't it, with nine substitutions, but... Fantastic moment for him, 17-year-old. This is his first taste of first-team action in the FA Cup. Shrewsbury free kick. The man takes it down on the chest. Austin helps it on its way a little tiny bit, and Shrewsbury can keep it. Dan Gosling went off before I was allowed to have much chance to say what I wanted to do about him. He's played 16 games in the FA Cup, one goal. That goal was, I'll get back to that, because crossfield ball finds Mal Benning, who stays on side in line with the penalty area, tries across towards the back post, towards Bowman, who's already got a hat-trick, it's over his head. Winchester can retrieve back stick, put it up the line, and then play it back towards Winchester again, inside the penalty area, in a good position, pulls one across, goal, he goes all the way, bounces through the six-yard box, he got a touch from a Notts player to loop it over the first man and take it out all the way for a Shrewsbury throwing on his near side. Well, that's the most dangerous attack Shrewsbury have created of their own making, wasn't it? Good ball, good switcher ball, out to Mal Benning. Dangerous ball into the back post, just over the head of Bo Bowman at the far post. And then the second phase of play, a ball inside that that right wing back, allowing the ball at the by byline to be pulled across. And thankfully, from a Notts perspective, nobody able to get on the end of it from a Shrewsbury, but Shrewsbury forward piece of play. Austin does well to win the ball back, and then play a little... Very tight 1-2 with Langstaff and then does well to keep possession again and then find a good pass on towards Jody Jones who's finally got a little bit of green grass ahead of him to run into to try and break on Shrewsbury. Jones then plays it outside of him to Sanderson for a first touch and a not shirt which wins 
Now it's a throw in, far side, which Jones will take quickly back to Chickson. A good chance for a cross here, in towards Marias. Defender got all got shirt all over him. Pull back towards Sanderson to shoot. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, oh what a moment that is for the Knox youngster, James Sanderson. He's been on the pitch two minutes. He's only 17. He's got Knox back in it with a great shot low into the corner. What a moment! Knox are back in it. It's 3-2. Absolutely, what a moment, James Sanderson. Take a bow. Just 17 years of age, as you said. Been on the pitch barely two minutes. He's playing in that forward position. It's a ball in from the left-hand side. Junior Marais with his back to goal near the edge of the penalty area. The ball just gets a touch off the defender onto the edge of the box, straight into the path of Sanderson. But I said there's not been many chances in the game tonight. He's about on the edge of the box, onto his right foot. Didn't think twice. First time, hit it low and hard and true with his right foot. And it's beyond Marco Morosi into the back of the net. Sh uh, Notts County 2, Shrewsbury 3. Absolutely no dis disrespect to that. He went in and had to check his first name on the team sheet. We, don't, we didn't know any anything about him an hour and a half ago. But James what? Sanderson has just got his name written in Madeleine Lights. What an introduction. 17 years of age, two minutes into the FA Cup. Yes, his first professional goal. And we could do with another. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's game on with a quarter of an hour to go. It's turning into another cup classic, Club's thriller. At Meadow Lane, Notts 2, Shrewsbury 3. 14 and a half to go on match night for BBC Radio Nottingham on Five Sports Extra tonight for you as well. Tipton is on the ball for Knotts. Falls backwards with him. Not got too many options behind him. He's just he's sprinting in the wrong direct on Tipton. And that's to get back to now Baldwin. Plays it forward to Bostock. Now Tipton again. Baldwin then switches it towards Jigson very quickly going to tell you about that, that, that Dan Gosling goal just started. He's got one FA Cup goal of the winner for Everton against Liverpool in round four in 2009. The only reason why I mention it is because you might remember it. It was the one where when the goal was about to go in, a tic-tac advert came across the screens. So some people missed it. And that was Dan Gosling. Anyway, here come Knotts again. Also trying to find Marias edge of the D. It's cut out and cleared away downfield. A long clearance downfield with Baldwin all over Udo. I'm very surprised that that's not been given as a free kick because Baldwin had no intention of going for the ball and brought down Dan Udo. This game is stretched and opening up, which is exactly what Knotts need. They need to find some spaces they need to open up to do that. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, let's not mention, forget the part that Junior Marias played in the build-up to the goal. Backed into his defender, received the ball well inside uh, the Shrewsbury penalty area, made a nuisance of himself, and that allowed the space when the ball rolled free. An unerring finish from James Sanderson. What an introduction to, to men's football, professional football, and the FA Cup. And well, the magic of the FA Cup might still be alive. It certainly will be if Notts can find another goal to, to level things up. It's so well to keep his shot down as well, didn't he? Because it came to him... At with quite a lot of pace on it do well to keep it low and high he's on the ball again here edge of the D and can't quite keep possession this time as the ball was fizzed into him back pass and Morosi just had enough on that back pass his way and now listen to that roar the fans want more they're getting more 13 to go Knotts are very much in this cup tie I'll say it again you know 77 and a half minutes on the clock so there's still time for Knotts but, but Knotts have been the better team all throughout this game Austin crosses early towards the far side. Jones will try and keep it in play. It'll just allow a touch of coming from the defender, Bennett, to take it out for a knots throw in far side. Jones is going to be told to go further forwards to take a throw in. Can you believe it? He was yeah. too far back. Yeah, the ball went out by the corner flag, didn't he? He was taking it mm, 10 yards away from it. So the referee just tells him to go nearer the corner flag, and which actually does him a favour. It allows one or two Notch players to make an angle for him. He didn't have many options before as he tried to get on with the gun. Now back inside their own half with Baldwin. The gap between Shrewsbury's back five and then midfield three is a couple of yards. <laughs> Not much, yeah, absolutely. Austin, now Bostock inside the Shrewsbury half, finds a pass square to Chickson, comes back to Baldwin again, not too far away from entering the last 10, with not still 3-2 down, but making a fight of it now, Tipton, he's got a bit of space to run into, can Shrewsbury really hold this sort of pressure off as Austin whips across in, which will loop up in the air and can't be kept in by the goalkeeper, he'll take it out for Notts' fifth, sixth corner in fact of the evening on this near side, taken short to Langstaff. Now Austin. Austin trying to find the ball 
which is guilty of handball as off of Jordan Shipley has also tried to poke it forwards and so not have a free kick right wide right good well I can't say good, good crossing position kind of irrelevant because they'll probably take it short as the fog continues to pile in that's a cold meadow lane but the game is warming us all up now ten and a half to go not two Shrewsbury three not free kick wide right Bostock and the man and the two that are over it two man wall it's in between the right edge of the penalty area and then the right hand touch line put it halfway inside that from both directions as I said the man and Bostock the two that are over it Ollie tipped and not too far away for a short one if that's what they decide to do the man rolls it to Bostock he will then cross towards the back post that one there sadly in the black and white shirt there was when it was first taken but they ran towards the near post the ball went towards the far and it goes behind for a goal kick against the final 10 yeah that, that may be an example of why not don't throw the ball into the penalty area you know willy nilly from set pieces got that all wrong there just John Bostock floated into the far post the runners had gone across the near and as you say floated harmlessly out for a goal kick as we enter the final 10 minutes of this game plus whatever stoppage time the referee's going to add at the end not one goal behind not two Shrewsbury three but it's very firmly not in the ascendancy as it has been virtually all throughout this game yet somehow because of individual errors we find ourselves 3-2 behind 4,551 people inside Bed Lane tonight 674 from Shropshire Shrewsbury trying to put a few passes together doesn't last very long Bostock can nip it away on that far touchline running towards his own goal these mark are so cold aren't they <laughs> it's going to be like a scene from Dumb and Dumber isn't it we're going to try to chip them out of our hands at the end of it I think the hand's frozen to it Chickson runs towards halfway lays it back to Baldwin squares to Tipton who's got again a bit of space to run into ahead of him only the man outside he goes to Aaron the man wide right who cuts in field with the ball and continues his running field for checking back onto the right hand side then laying it to Bostock for not inside the Shrewsbury half now Chickson still going as Adam Chickson lays it on towards Jody Jones wide left got one to try and beat in line with the penalty area Sander comes, Sanderson comes short as the ball comes in it loops in as far as Ollie Tipton and then he plays it off of the Shrewsbury man and out for another what he's given a goal kick well why would the ball have gone over there if it had come off the knots man that's got to be a corner. It should have been a corner. Yeah, the referee points, it's a goal kick. But yeah, it looked for all the world like Ollie Tipton won the ball first, played it off the Shrewsbury defender. Uh, just wondering if somebody said too much, he's having a word with uh, John Bostock, who's already been booked, so yeah. hopefully that's just in his capacity as captain, he's having a word with him there. Nothing untoward that he said. And we'll see the first change from Matt Taylor, the Shrewsbury head coach. Indeed, it is going to be Ryan Bowman, the hat-trick man, who leaves in place of him is Tamisa Sabuala, which is a striker off, centre-back on. Although it doesn't look like that's where he's going to go. Yeah, you'd imagine he's maybe going to... Well, he's ran up alongside Udo up, up front, hasn't he? But maybe just saying about a change of formation, potentially. They say he's a, he's a centre-off by trade, so we shall see. I think they've gone to a 5-4-1, possibly. Udo's going to play up front on his own, which, again, that's you know, credit to Knotts, isn't it, that you've yeah. got a team from a higher division making a substitution in the final 10 minutes to become even more defensive because Knotts have had that much of the ball and, you know, have been posing the threat in this second half. Yeah, sent out by Trey, but can play wide dry, which is where he's gone, Savala. But Jones is now running inside of him, giving it back to Bostock. Now Aidan Baldwin, 40 yards out, gives it to Tipton. Who gives it in back? And now quite narrow as well in that defence and midfield. Shrewsbury all trying to be as very compact as they possibly can. Now Austin has it, cuts inside of his man, and then doesn't not find the same wavelengths. Aaron the man, he went one way, ball went the other, straight out play for a goal kick. And like last time, Mark Emery is going to take every possible second he can over this goal kick. Yeah, absolutely. But as you say, yeah, they've gone, gone to a 5-4-1 formation. So Udo is just up, you know, ploughing a lone four up front. He's barely seen any of the ball, except when Knotts have gifted it to him to put on a plate for his strike partner, Bowman, who's gone off the pitch with his hat-trick. And he'll say thank you very much. But now they're so tight on there's very little space. Knotts have got to move the ball quickly and try and get into them wide areas. And try and get the ball into the box and try and cause mayhem. 
Yeah, Shrewsbury haven't, haven't defended with confidence, I wouldn't say, in this game. No, absolutely. I, th I think they've defended with numbers, but again, when not have asked the question, really believed they've caused problems. Tony Jones just about keeps the ball in play. Now Sanderson has it, running across the field with it, gives it on towards Tipton. For not back from him to Baldwin. He has to turn backwards for a second, just trying to wriggle off the challenge of Udo. I can't believe the, the lack of space between Shrewsbury's back five and midfield four. It's barely space for a player to stand in. As Jones tries to cut inside of Bennett, can't do so. He's nicked away from him, but Bostock's there as we approach the final five. It's still very much game on. It's not two, Shrewsbury three. Tipton finds Austin. Digs out an early cross towards middle, towards McCauley Langstaff. Headed away for it, reaches him. Chickson can win the ball back for Knox and find Tipton. Now Baldwin, back to Tipton again. Down the right-hand side to Austin. They again thought about an early cross. Fakes the cross instead and gives it to the man. He now pulls it towards Tipton. Got pressure coming his way. Does well to keep hold of it initially. Then Austin trying to nip it away from his man. Can't do so. Then concedes the cheapest of free kicks, which probably is a free kick. However, doesn't warrant the holding of the knee like it's been broken from the Shrewsbury man who is again just trying to play for time can't blame him Jordan Shipley played here for Coventry in the in that dreaded playoff game to Jordan Shipley yeah, again that's testament of you know how much under the cost Shrewsbury are a little bit they, they can't get the ball they can't they've not been able to retain possession for I, th I think if they put six passes together in one move all night yeah. I'll be amazed at that not to have had all the ball um, Again, we're just going to be talking about them individual errors. There's the difference between, you know, had we not had them individual errors, we'd be talking about a completely dominant display from Knotts. Mark Amorosi, the Shrewsbury goalkeeper, has pretty much been asking for a yellow card for the last five minutes. And this time he does get one. He's pre he was pretty much stood next to the ball, just, just, just waiting, really. He was waiting for as long as he possibly could before the referee booked him. And then he just launches the ball straight out of play for a goal kick and Knotts have possession back. So the Shrewsbury keeper is booked with four minutes of the 90 to go. Can, is, there, is there a chance in this game? You feel like there is. You do feel like there is. Baldwin finds Bostock. The Knotts fans find their voices again on this cold and wintry night at Meadow Lane. Tipton finds Bostock and he tries to run forward with it and lays it to Aidan Baldwin, wide left is Jody Jones. He's in between the two lines of defenders. Goes onto his left foot, then back onto his right. Pulls a pass towards Sanson, goes underneath his stud, sadly. But Shrewsbury's clearance is poor, not to have it immediately back again, which angers their manager, Matt Taylor. Now Baldwin can bring the ball forwards. And still, just at a walking pace, out wide right to the man. Thought he wasn't going to get there first, but he does. As Austin left it for him. Now Tipton has it. Marias has come short. But Tipton goes instead square towards Bostock. Final three minutes we're now in. Knots two, Shrewsbury three. Bostock finds Marias, who again is still deep. And he gives it square to Tipton right-hand side. Halfway inside the Shrewsbury half. Marias again. Trying to force something forward and he's dispossessed. He has to be careful not to give away a foul. Although there is a runner through the middle, which is Winchester. Chickson stopped him by giving away a foul. And surely, I mean, we both picked our pens up there thinking Chickson had to be yellow carded and unbelievably he's not going to be. Well, I think the referee just wants to, to continue the game, continue the flow of the game. It's, <laughs> it's not a bad effort, that. It's not a bad effort from <laughs> Shay Junkley. The skipper's tried to score from the free kick from the halfway line. Aidan Stone, thankfully, seen it all the way, caught it underneath his crossbar. And already Aidan Baldwin, oh, sorry, Sam Austin, cross, crossing the halfway line. You're right, first time, Aidan Baldwin, he finds Sam Austin. It's, it's foggy style, I'll let you <laughs> off. <laughs> now Tipton tries across towards the backstick. The keeper comes for it and will catch. That effort from Che Dunkley from that free kick, by the way. It's good that Edenstone saw it because he had to catch it right underneath the crossbar. It would have gone in if the keeper had not seen it straight away, but thankfully he did. I'm going to suggest that's the first effort Shrewsbury have had on target it hasn't come from a notch yeah. mistake. And it's gone from inside their own half. Yeah. Which says everything. Morosi got the ball in his hand, just refuses to let go of it pretty much. Now does launch it downfield. Not a bad looking ball, actually. Stone will come for it. He's come a long way out of his goal. He's inside his penalty area, still doesn't get it, but does force Udo away from goal. Now back up the line it comes to Anderson. Udo trying to run around the outside of Austin, can't do so. Austin will win it back. And pass it infield to Tipton, lays it back to Stone. 
passes it forward to Bostock. We approach the final minute. I don't think there's going to be all that money of added time. So he's got to come pretty quickly. If not, he's going to force a replay. They're inside the Shrewsbury half again now with Bostock. Around the outside, far left is Jody Jones. He beats his man very easily towards the byline. It's all about pulling it across. Thinks again, maybe should have done because he has two around him. But two between them have won the ball back in that corner flag. They clear it downfield. There's nobody there in the blue shirt at all. And Bostock has it now for Knotts to try and force another opportunity before this game is done. Baldwin fizzes far too much on that ball in towards Sanderson. He took up a good position. He runs straight behind for a goal kick. Oh, frustration on Aidan Baldwin there because he's got, a, he's got a fairly simple pass on. He's got to play it with pace. But James Sanderson just pulls into that little space, that pocket of space between the centre-half and the right-sided centre-half on the inside left channel on the edge of the box. And so he's got to fizz it into him, but if he can find his man with the pass, there's a half an opportunity there potentially, but unfortunately, wayward pass goes out for a goal kick. Oof. And we'll have six what? added minutes. Where's that come from? Well, either way, we're not too bothered. And we'll listen to the Knotts fans get behind the Knotts team as, as ever in this game. Knotts in possession, just crossing the halfway line. Can we find an equaliser in these six added minutes? I thought it might say four at a push. I was expecting three. It says six. Six minutes to go. I've had a time. Can Knotts get a chance? Can they take us to a replay in Shropshire a week on Tuesday? Aidan Baldwin on the ball. Halfway inside of Shrewsbury half. They have defended well. You've got to give them that Shrewsbury on the whole. In terms of sort of restricting Knotts to... Very little. When the ball's gone in there, they have looked a little bit shaky, though. Bostock now finds Tipton. Luke Williams pointing frantically at him, wanting a few more bodies up there. Bostock, five yards up from the halfway line, gives it to the right-hand side to Tipton. I've got too many options for the second. That's going towards Marias. Plays a little one-two with him, gets the ball back to Tipton, then lays it back to Bostock. Just trying to tease Shrewsbury out, aren't they? Because they're so deep. It's like a back eight now. In a row, that midfield is now just also part of the defence. As Chickson tries to cross towards the back post, which goes in the wrong direction. It could have gone anywhere, and it bounces through towards the goalkeeper. It could have gone anywhere. Defender cleared it on for another defender. It took all the sting out of that of that clearance, and it just bounces through towards the goalkeeper. Yeah, what well, you were saying a minute ago, when whenever we put the ball into the penalty area, there's a little bit of panic in the Shrewsbury defence when it's a good ball, and Joe Anderson that time just sort of scuffing his clearance into the back of Aaron Pierre. It could have gone anywhere. Fortunately for the visitors, it bounced favourably for Marco Morosi, who clears the ball upfield, but already Knotts have got possession back and look to build. Sanderson scored on 75 minutes. They've had 15 minutes, not really created a chance in that time. The Shrewsbury ready another change just to run the clock down. There's four minutes to stop his time to go. Can Knotts create a chance here? Bostock running forwards. He's still going. He's had a penalty here. He's still going. Goes to ground. He's not going to get a penalty. And rightly so, but he just ran through the Shrewsbury defence there. But not have it back with Austin, who runs around the outside of his defender and whips it a good cross towards Marias. Overhead kick! Oh! Oh! Overhead kick from Junior Marias, and it goes to the wrong side of the post. Oh, that was close. We were both off our seats. We, we thought that was going to be a Garnacho moment, wasn't it? The ball in from the right hand side, Sam Austin swinging cross. Junior Marias about on the penalty spot, goes with a spectacular overhead kick. Met it well, contact was <laughs> decent. And from this angle, we were just wondering whether it was going to nestle in that back of that net in front of the family stand. It goes wide of the post and out for a goal kick. Not sure from this angle how far wide it was, but it was certainly a heart-in-mouth moment for that Shrewsbury defence and Marco Morosi in the sticks for them. Shrewsbury making a change. They can Dan Udo off, bringing Jack Lufferin on. And Austin wins the Man of the Match award. Lufferin, part of the under-18s that they brought on, they just put him on to just stick him up front and I think he'll just run around and try and cause a nuisance in the final few minutes. Another long ball forward with... gives Knott's possession back of the ball. There's three minutes to go. Is there another chance? They might just need one more. Well, I thought we were going to get a spectacular moment. We asked for some a moment of magic or a mistake. Well, we've seen plenty of mistakes made by Knott's defensively. We've said a moment of magic for James Sanderson, 17-year-old on his debut, two minutes into his FA Cup debut, his professional debut, scoring a goal to bring it back to the score that we're at the minute. Knots two, Shrewsbury three, Knots pressing for that equaliser. They're doing everything they can. Knots Bostock on the ball, gives it now to Baldwin, returns the ball to Bostock again. Got a little bit of space ahead of him, middle of the half, gives it now on towards Austin, who cuts inside of his man on his left foot, thinks too much on it, straight hands of the goalkeeper, it's disappointing. 
on his weaker left foot. There's bodies up there. But it just goes straight through to the goalkeeper. Now it's only two minutes to go of added time. Yeah, there might be a little bit extra, though, with that extra substitution. There might be a little bit of added time to the added time, so they don't get that six is a minimum. We've got two minutes left. Morosi keeping the ball as long as he dare. And just following <laughs> it straight through to Aidan Stone. So not back in possession of the ball. Ball bounced twice and then just went straight through towards Aidan Stone. And they will come again. Baldwin can just sprint forward with the ball. Through the centre circle. Now Tipton goes square to Bostock. Who cuts inside of the substitute Luffer and gives it back on towards Tipton. Who brings the ball forward in towards the final third. Now Austin again. Wants a bit of movement, goes to Tipton, gets the ball back again. He might try an early cross here. Towards the middle, Chickson lays it back towards Marais, edge of the D. What can he do? he give it on towards Aidan Baldwin, who tries a shot, and the keeper can save way to his right and keep hold of it well as well. And as we approach the final minute of added time, that might be the last chance of the game, you know. Oh, it's, uh, Aidan Baldwin, know he's got that in his locker. Last minute winners think of Boreham Wood last season. With the ball into the box, Adam Chickson didn't realise how much time and space he has. He was about 15 yards out. He could have brought the ball under control, laid it back, and then it was set in front of Aidan Baldwin. His right footed shot was on target, but fairly comfortable for Morosi just d diving to his right hand side, catching the ball. But here come Knox. Is this one final oh. attack? Well, maybe not as Aidan Baldwin gives the ball away. Every second matters. As Morosi had the ball in the air, all three of the sort of managers for Shrewsbury were pointing up, just saying, kick as high as you can, waste two more seconds by having the ball in the air. Says everything. Yeah, that's it. That's how desperate they are to be in the third round, in the hat for the next round, which is where they are at the minute, unless, can, unless Knotts can produce a moment of magic in these final, what, 30 seconds. They played 95 minutes and 41 seconds. Knotts have it with Sam Austin. Forward ball towards Marias. It's headed away and lashed away by Mal Benning up in the air. Luffin will chase. Bostock should get there first. He will. First time back towards Aidan Stone. We have played the six minutes. We're at the referee's discretion. There was a substitution. Don't forget from Shrewsbury and stop his time. As Baldwin goes long, it's a poor ball. It's a poor ball for Aidan Baldwin. It runs behind for a goal kick. That might just about see us through but it's a forced ball which is what not don't do by from Aidan Baldwin far too much on it out for a goal kick yeah absolutely yeah it's not what Knots don't do that they don't go from back to front like that but you know needs must we were in the final 10-15 seconds of the game and it looks like Knots are going to be out of the FA Cup but I mean just just such a bizarre game and such a bizarre way to go out as the referee's whistle does go, and it is Shrewsbury who will go into the third round. Indeed, Knotts are out of the FA Cup in the second round. They they gave it everything attackingly, but defensively, they just gifted Shrewsbury three goals, and that was too much of a mountain to climb, and Shrewsbury must be leaving here this evening thinking, how have we won that game? Well, I'm sat here thinking, how have they won that game? Because, well, we know how they've won it because of Knotts' individual mistakes calamitous individual mistakes have gifted Shrewsbury the game oh, you could argue that that is not best 90 minute performance of the season you know both halves they dominated the ball okay didn't create loads of chances but let's not forget this is a team without McCauley Langstaff Dan Crowley and David McGoldrick in it so we do we are losing a little bit of attacking threat there and we've absolutely dominated a team sat in mid-table in League One in terms of possession. We've kept the ball magnificently. I think Dan Gosling and John Bostock were superb and Sam Austin in the middle of the park. Um, you know, but just ultimately a fantastic performance doesn't get the reward you want with, well, individual mistakes like, like that led to the, the Shrewsbury goals. And Shrewsbury haven't, we say it all the time that the opponents don't have to work hard to get the goals, but tonight they didn't have to work hard. They were absolutely gift-wrapped. Well, Ryan Bowman, give her up to Hattrick. You know, what more can you want, you know, day after your birthday? But, you know, there's plenty of positives for Knotts not to take out of that. But utterly, uh, you know, ultimately, the disappointment and frustration that we're out of the FA Cup when, with a performance like that, we should have deservedly been in the hat for the third round. It feels a little bit like opportunity wasted, doesn't it? Particularly with the fact that Dan Crowley and David McGoldy didn't didn't feature in the in the squad if you had them on in the final 15 when you're pushing you just feel like they quite probably would have got a goal yeah, absolutely yeah I mean they, they controlled the game which is what Luke Williams wants the team to do so exactly you know first off they didn't create enough chances and second off you could argue they didn't either but again we're playing against a team in a higher level higher level of opposition and they've barely got a kick they're kicking the ball away at the end they're desperate for it time wasting trying to slow the game down okay they've got got injuries themselves Shrewsbury but you know, that's a mark of how good Knotts were in possession of the ball. And I would have just loved to have seen it. And I know the reasons why, you know, Luke Williams might not have wanted to play Dan Crowley and David McGoldrick, but 
I would have loved to see Notts with, with a, a Crowley and a McGoldrick and obviously a McCauley Langstaff and really have a go because you feel Crikey me, that was a shrewd routine there for the taking tonight. Yeah, we can see the Treasury, fan, uh, the Treasury players sorry, in front of the fans over on the far side from us, milking up the applause from their supporters. They've had to work really hard for the win, and not probably quite in a way that you, that you normally have to work so hard, particularly when you've scored three goals away from home. But how to, how to not stamp out these silly errors, which aren't just... They're not just not going away, they're getting more and more obvious, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean... It, Look, say about all the time, football is about decision-making. And, and whenever you do anything, whenever you receive the ball, whenever you're off the ball, you're making decisions about where to move to, what to do. If you're on the ball, where's my pass? What are my options? Where's my awareness of where the opponents are, where my teammates are? And if you make the wrong decisions, then you come unstuck. And, and the proof is in the pudding of the wrong decision is ultimately, you know, if you're a striker, if you have a shot and you miss the target, you know, wrong decision sometimes when you should have passed. You know, if you, if you go for a pass and you don't find your, your teammate, wrong decision or wrong execution. And defensively, if you, if you decide to dither on the ball or you want to take an extra touch or you want to try and do something, and it leads to handing the, the opponent's goals and golden opportunities, as we have done tonight, wrong decisions. Like I say, Luke Williams will be will be frustrated. He, he, he'll have to give them a little bit of leeway because you can't legislate for them sort of individual errors that, that they're making. That's not a it's not a tactical thing. It's not a you know, it's nothing other than individual errors. And unfortunately, as players, if you make too many individual errors, then you'll soon find yourself out of the team. And that's that's the problem now that Knots have got. You know, we know the transfer window isn't open until January. But well, that's sort of the decisions, that, you know, above, you know, off the pitch that they've got to make about, look, has it come a point now where we're making too many individual errors or too, an individual is making too many errors that, look, we need re reinforcements in them positions. Look, you keep making mistakes, you can't complain if you're not in the starting line. Thank you very much, Mark Starr. More from Stale to come in the post-match reaction. I'm off pit side to go in here from the head coach, Luke Williams, after a... A disappointing exit from the FA Cup in a game that really does feel like a missed opportunity to get in to the third round draw on Sunday afternoon. But it wasn't to be not gifted three goals all to Josh Bowman who gets himself a hat-trick. They fought back 17-year-old James Sanderson with a fantastic story getting himself amongst the goal. But it wasn't enough not to lose by three goals to two and here is Jake Garner. Thank you very much, Adam Hassel and Mark Stallard. So not to be for Notts County as they bow out of the FA Cup at the second round. Uh, elsewhere in the FA Cup uh, second round, uh, Wigan are through. They beat York City by a goal to nil. Uh, most of the other FA Cup games are being played tomorrow. Meanwhile, in the uh, UEFA Women's Nations League, Group A, uh, England women were 2-0 down at home to the Netherlands at half-time, but uh, they've pulled it back and they've gone and won the game by three goals to two. Uh, Georgia Stanway, Lauren Hemp and a goal in the 91st minute by Ella Toon uh, scoring the late winner to see the Lionesses take the points in Group A. A one, so no luck tonight for Notts County. We'll get the reaction from Luke Williams uh, as soon as we get it on BBC Radio Nottingham, and we'll be heading back to Meadow Lane for a chat with Mark Stallard and get his thoughts as Notts County about the FA Cup.